Friday, you bastards. Oh, there she is. Hi, sweetheart. Happy anniversary. Thanks, Randy. That's amazing. Is this Randy Rhodes or Ellie Brecker? Come on. <laughs> Tell me the real story. She loved you. Tell me what the two of you have got going. Well, you know, uh, you know, I thought it was time she should do the story. She, uh... You know, she just, uh, she loves you. What can I tell you? I know that, but she loves my mom's mandel bread better. No, she likes the strudel. And the strudel. Yeah, she was big into Millie. She really was. Yeah. yeah I think she's going to write a book about her. No, Millie's going to write a book about her. She's catching <laughs> already. Well, why did she write this? And I didn't say that. And she made me sound like an old kvetch. And I said, yeah. Oh, come on. I thought that was a nice little touch there. Yeah, a little touch. Yeah. People... So how are you doing up there? Boy, Gary, by the way, uh, called me yesterday and he said, uh, tell Randy, don't worry about making that video because she won't be here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't my life a living hell? Boy, oh boy, what comes around uh, goes around. <laughs> Man, is I want to so bad. Is, is he really coming back? Huh? There? Is, uh, talk to Budell. He's got nothing to lose. Let me put it that way. No, seriously. Is is he going to really... That's that's what I got to tell you. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, whatever you say. So, talk to Budell. He'll tell you everything. Well, I'm sure glad they put that ravishing picture of you in my article there. That was lovely. Did you get that? Did I get what? What I said to you. About what? About, uh, people were calling me going, I can't tell if you like him or not. And I said, I love him. And yeah. So, you know, so yeah, well, but what was that about the ticket taker at Neverland? What well, the I hell was that? You... Am I some kind of a child molester now or what? What does it, that mean? It meant that I know how you feel about religion. I said you had a, you could have had a lucrative career as a televangelist, right? Yeah. Because you love religion. And that, uh, and I also know how you feel about little Mikey there. Also, I thought that uh, you would get it. <laughs> okay. Whatever you say, okay. Whatever We're still I trying say. to figure it out. Well, whatever. So when are you going to go to Vegas? Take little Mo Green there with you. Yeah. Give him a little massage. You mm -hmm. know what I'm talking he ain't about? Going with and us. I'll come back and give you some night numbers. He's not going with us. Huh? He's not going. No, take him there. Put him He's on the little table. He's not going, or I'm here, I'll tell you that. Put yeah. some eyeglasses on him so, with a bullseye. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, congratulations for getting out of here. We're hearing from all the lucky people. We heard from Ranieri <laughs> and a whole crew over there at Waxy, and now Randy Rhodes from WJNO. Yeah, and we'll yeah. hear from all the lucky people that got the hell out of here. Well, listen, let me tell you something. And if you thought Boy Gary was fun, which I'm sure he'll be again, you ought to meet uh, Steve Nickel. <laughs> well, I did meet Steve Nickel. That's why I left. Uh, well, see, she's smarter than all the rest of us. <laughs> even <laughs> even right Adam now. is nodding on that one. That's right. <laughs> Oh, my God. You can't even begin to believe it. Oh, yeah, I can. That's why yeah. I left. Just listen to those traffic reports. That'll tell you everything you need to know. Yeah. Well, it kills me. I get jealous when you worship somebody else's butt, you know. Well, listen, Randy, have a great life. Well, listen, Neil, I, I just want people to know that, you know, there's going to be a lot of people calling you today. And oh, they're yeah. all going to be paying their respects. But if it wasn't for you, I just don't think there, that I would have ever gotten started. And so well, I, I, really I don't do know, yeah, I don't know whether time. that's a plus or a minus, but, uh, you know. Yeah, I think about it, too. <laughs> okay, hang in there. I love you. We'll see you. Bye. 
There you go, Randy Rhodes. Noon to 3, WJNO, 1230 on your AM dial. Let's promote everybody else's show. That's one thing I've always done for years. I'm not paranoid like those little butt suckers over there at QAM who dump everybody else's name because they're a bunch of paranoid little twerps. What are they worried about? They've been sold anyway. So what are they worried about? What have they got to lose? In fact, if they would start mentioning our names, they might get an audience over there, but I doubt it. Look at this. This is beautiful. It's a picture of a hippopotamus, and it says, No solamente uh, Hank Goldberg, también es un hippopotamo. You see that? That's cute, in Espanol, no less. And by the way, if you're going by the airport... Oh, I'm sorry. Look at all these cute faxes. There's one from my dentist. Thanks, Gary. And there was one here from uh, Mark Tadino. Now, there's a guy. If we can't get J.C. in here, how about Mark Tadino? Let's see what he's got. I love you, Mark. Man, do I ever. Well, more so years ago. All kinds of good stuff in here. Thanks to uh, Sarah inside the building. They got balloons. They got a big thing on here. The only problem is, you know, Norberto, who just came off the banana boat 20 or 30 years ago, they have him always put up the marquee signs in front. And I drive up to work this morning, and it says, Neil, thanks for 20 years of... And it's supposed to say... Oi! And he put a J in front of the... Oi! How do you like that? Because the Cubans, the Hispanics, they don't pronounce the J. It's always silent. Isn't that what it was supposed to say? Thanks for 20 years of... Oi! But hey, so that's cute. Thanks to everybody. Thanks, Sarah. Did she, did, what did she just say? She say, blow it out your ass? Probably. Something like that. No, it's cute. We got balloons. We got the helium ones, which I might take another hit of that a little while. Bob Green is in there, all tanned up, which means he's probably playing celebrity golf again out there. And uh, here we are, 20 years later. You'll never make it six months in this town, man. You'll never last here six months. Let me say it again. That man is dead, dead, dead. It gives me so much joy to know that that caller, that particular one, along with many others, by the way, from the KAT days, but that one in particular, you know he's dead. There's not even a little tiny bit of flesh left on those bones. Even the worms are ignoring him now. How do you like that? Even the worst maggots and faggots are ignoring his little bony ass because there's nothing left, not even a strip of flesh. He's dead, and I'm still here 20 years later. How do you like that? Unbelievable. So this is really a very emotional day, and if you believe that, I told you, if you just pump this, if you start about six months ahead, it's kind of like our Vegas trip. If you start many, many months ahead, and you really just pump it and pump it and pump it and push it and plug it. And look at those Brower lines going out there now as we speak. That's okay. That, like, epitomizes what I was saying yesterday. That's, like, part of it. And, by the way, how about that game last night, huh? That was pretty weak. Pretty bad officiating. Pretty weak effort all the way around. It was ponderous. If that game could have gotten any longer, I would just be coming in from the game right now. That was the slowest, the most monotonous, in addition to a just deadhead crowd with about 2,500 empty seats. It was uh, one of those things. We'll take the point, though, thank you. That's all right. 1013 at WIOD. The, the thrill is gone. If you haven't been listening to Defoe's new Saturday morning show, you've missed B.B. King. You've missed Jessica Aguirre. You've missed The Morning After with Jeff DeForest, 6 to 9 a.m. Saturdays on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. This traffic update is a service of the only sponsor we got. It's a parking lot now at the Palmetto Expressway. You know, we got the usual delays. It's rush hour. We got a few collisions. One on 27th Avenue, another one on 47th Avenue. Could be northbound. I don't know. Might be southbound. I don't know that either. Could be eastbound. We don't know. We can see nothing from this room. It don't have no windows. It's backed up a major problem all the way around the big curve. And I'm not talking about my ass. That's your eye spy. Don't shoot me out of this guy. Your traffic from your traffic chica. I say yes. W I I I U D. Okay. Neil's right. I that? suck. Do you think I could have the job, please? I can grade out. Ten seventeen. Shut up already, sweetheart. So anyway, here's a fax that with a spy report. Oh, here's Fat Rich is in here too. Look at that. Yeah. Being escorted in. Oh my God! I cannot believe it. I am truly speechless. Neil, I'm Ralph Edwards, and this is, and this is your wife, life. Oh, wait a minute. Let me turn that on first. You have milk cones. I'm just... You have milk cones for me. Yeah, we knew you were coming. Well, how... We nice. knew that you won't show up unless we feed you. Yeah, well... And Fat Rich is here today. Now, did you guys come in together or what? Yes. <laughs> yes, what? We bumped into each other in the parking lot, oh. but... Uh, right. Right. There was so much... Yeah, but his brother-in-law does uh, car repairs. So there don't was worry about so it. much love coming from this building. Uh, how <laughs> could I stay away? I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. Oh, my God! You know, and, and oh. I ju I've just heard you've just been saying wonderful things about me. I haven't heard them myself. Oh, thank God for that. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
but uh, oh my god! Uh oh! It's like when you, you know how when you have a bird call. <laughs> 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 no, seriously, you know how you have a bird call, and then all of a sudden the bird shows up. It flies out of nowhere. Which is fly, but It lands on tail. your arm, on your sleeve, and then drops a little number on you. How <sighs> you been, Glenn? Well, I feel pretty good. Yeah, you I look feel pretty a little good. older, <laughs> like all the rest of us, but generally the same. I got too much sun. I went swimming the other day. Did but, you? But it was wonderful. So it's so amazing to be down here in South Florida. Well... I must tell you, uh, I, I was uh, <laughs> this can't be happening. driving down. This I, is I unreal. had some uh, business to do in Fort Lauderdale yesterday, so I'm driving down to Miami, and I, I'm on the 79th Street Causeway, and it was hot yesterday. Let me ask you, do you do traffic? <laughs> it was hot yesterday, yeah. and so I was thirsty, and I just <laughs> I just flew into Flores to get something to drink, you know? Yeah, I dependable. saw Flores, I said, that's the place you to know, go. Now, when was this? Yesterday afternoon. You came in yesterday? Uh-huh. And uh, I walked up uh, to the, the guy standing by. I walk up to the guy behind the counter, and he looks at me, and he says, You're Glenn, aren't you? <laughs> I said, Wow. He wow. Says, he says, right. I heard your cackle today on Neil's show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yeah. if that was the one You've or not. You left your spot, just like every other bird. He leaves his trademark behind, like I said, on your sleeve. Do you know what the significance of yesterday the of you showing up in town yesterday, Sonny's Market reopened yesterday after a long I hiatus. I saw it, but I didn't know it had been closed. Sonny has Listen, reopened. Listen, I have if questions you want to pick about up a good this town. Fruit, I way. want you to answer my questions I have about this town. What happened to the television stations? I turned on the cable last night. I don't understand. NBC is on six. Yeah. We were the weatherman is, is on four. Brian Norcross, the weather fairy, is the news fairy now. Izzy, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> oh no, Izzy is my painter. <laughs> How come we and were the weatherman and Bob Mayer are on six? When yeah. did that happen? And how come Kelly Craig blew up like a bullfrog? What's going on? Have you seen her lately? Kelly Craig, my good close person. You remember Kelly? Oh, your good close personal friend, Kelly she Craig? She loves me. Why, does she hate you? <laughs> I always knew I liked her for some reason. No, seriously, it looks like somebody stuck a bicycle pump up her ass and blew her up about 30 pounds. <laughs> come on, Kelly, get on that Atkins, sweetheart. When did the station change By the way, you haven't again? seen how slim I am. Yes, Look you are. That. Not slim, but compared to Relatively. That. Yeah, relatively to the fat old slob that you were. Well, that's because I stopped eating all those meals every day we used to eat. Oh. I didn't come to eat lunch. Oh, that's we'll not why. Yeah, we'll oh, feed you. Oh, you will? But well, that's, that's not the reason here. I came. Anyway, I saw the Sun Sentinel article. I was in Boca yesterday. Yeah. And I saw the Sun Sentinel article. Very nice. I you read were in the... Boca for what? Uh, I, I had to see some people in Boca. Yeah. And I picked up the paper and I was looking at the not article. Boy Geary. No, and I, and I saw. Oh, that's the story. Glenn's going to be doing uh, J and O. That's what it is. And I saw. When you start. And I saw my name in the paper. I thought that was very nice. I come to town and they put my name in the paper. And <laughs> I yeah. love. Well, I wonder who carded that up. Neil, you know how nice and tight that is. Yeah. <laughs> Neil comments on his colleagues, and then his colleagues comment on Neil. And this great quote from Larry King. I must say that quote was wonderful. What did yeah. it say? Neil is the worst. No, he said... Hi, this is Larry King, and they don't come any better than Neil Rogers. That's, That's what he right. Said. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Why are... And then right at the end, he said... Blow me $50. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh, jeez. <laughs> Did you hear that? In stereo. Larry King was on Letterman a couple of weeks ago. This is the most shocking moment of my life. It and really is. they showed a picture. They took out a picture of Larry King taken yeah. at WIOD... In 1963, yeah. I must say, frightening. It was just... Had nothing to do with that. <laughs> so, uh, the worst talk radio I've ever heard in my life was on WIOD. The worst talk radio I've ever heard in my life was on WIOD. Yeah. Come on, Larry. Give us a call, will you? I will not give it to you. Okay. I just... He's going to call in. You mark my words. He will be calling in. I'd say Oh, shaky. here's Brett with a whole bunch of stuff. I, w I wonder if he's got JC locked up inside of that we thing. Have, we have another guest for you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tom Chicka. Look how fat he got. How you doing, Tom? <laughs> He's not on the Atkins. Pull up a seat down here. Sit down for a second. We'll see if we can get another lawsuit going. So look at this. They're all showing up today. I wouldn't be surprised if Madeline Murray O'Hare shows up, which we'll have to order double lunch. Well, we'll pray that she comes. This is quite an... <laughs> yeah, right. Who do we pray to? Can you believe that? No, I was surprised coming in listening. Surprised? I'm surprised to see you. Well... Yeah, I guess this is a day of surprises. This 20 is a day years of, of surprise. 
day of total shock. Almost as shocking as the fact Melissa said nice things about me in your newspaper. I'm not. She Melissa's actually nice loves girl. me. She does. She's a and she's a nice person. Yeah, so a nice if she does get away from that get... goddamn Super Dave, man, that guy. Do you know that she's at Pompano almost every night? Yeah, I know that. And by the way, I see that horse that they gave us last week. Thank God I left early. I he's wonder about that. I said, don't give Neil a horse if you lose. Yeah, you'll he's the still running. It. Wally is still whipping and hitting him. He's still running. I spelled my name wrong, Tom, but I still oh, appreciate well. you putting it in the paper. No, I pre- I come to town, my name's in your paper, you know? That's yeah, pretty yeah. neat. <laughs> Not everybody could do that. He hasn't lost it, folks. He still hasn't lost it. All right, let's do a break, and we'll come back to the Glen Hill Polka Show. I have that in there, by the way. I do have the Glen Hill Polka, which I'm sure you haven't heard in many years. But, many, uh, it's, many, it's, it's in there. many years. 1023 at WYOD. News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 W-I-O-D. Neil Rogers, God. Look at that. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I'm just <laughs> totally... Uh, if you missed the Neil Rogers way. show yesterday on 610 W-I-O-D, you missed this. Is this the bird? Yeah. Bird, how you doing? Okay. Listen, do me a favor. Play anything, because I can't stand listening to you. Uh, you sound like a douchebag. Do no, just do me a favor, play anything. Well, can I ask you a question before you go? Oh, God, you sound so stupid. I hate to talk to you. Yeah, go ahead. Well, why did you call me? I didn't call you. No, no, just to tell you not to say anything. Just play something. Oh, God, can't stand it. Well, then why are you listening? Oh, play something already. Why won't you answer ah, my... I can't stand him. You won't... See, he won't talk to me. Oh, we got a car here. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that sure brings back some great memories, don't it? Sure does. Now, okay. did you say to the bird, let's do that show all over again. Let's uh, recreate that. Mm. I wonder if Joey's going to show up here today. Yeah, I, I have my nose up Neil's ass. Wouldn't that be something for my 20th anniversary? The only thing that would be a bigger surprise if that guy showed up. Brian. Yeah? Brian was uh, stooping over a little while. We had to stand him up straight again. Brian's a little <laughs> stooped, but uh, that's where it goes. Now, Joey is doing uh, an overnight... Isn't that frightening? Yeah, from Nature- WA. See, right. Nobody carries it down here, do they? No. God, no, he's God out of a uh, WOR. With Stan. <laughs> yeah. He's out of WOR. That's tough competition. Now, Stan... Oh, he's out of WOR? Yeah. I thought it was from ABC. No, it's OR. Oh, well, no wonder. It's like now, one is he to... on after or before Arlene Francis? He's on like 1 to 5 in the morning. And does Stan do his show out of his house? No, that's like out of an orifice. Oh. Literally. Yeah, somewhere in Carl Springs, I think. Uh, somewhere. Yeah. And he's got some other uh, ultra right wing Nazi on there doing the uh, some other show out of that same studio. Oh yeah. So listen, uh, but you stand. Uh, now I know it. I'm ahead of you guys. Stan's coming in today with that two grand. All right. Oh, I knew it. I knew he was just waiting for the appropriate Thank God day. God stands asleep as we speak. Speaking, by the way, of people who are like down and out on their luck, you know our good friend uh, Captain Dave. Yeah, where is he? Has, he hasn't called you. Can you believe it? Is he, I heard he was. He in must Cal- not know your number. You heard what? He's in town? California. California. And he called about two weeks ago on the air one day, and uh, just out of the blue, and talking about his struggling uh, non-career as an actor and seeking his fortune and all this other. And I just had a premonition that because he was calling on the air that I might just get a call at home. And sure enough, I got home, and there was a desperate call on my machine. (laughs) What do you think he wanted? Money. (laughs) Neil, Uh, send money. Well, see, you say that. It sounds so insensitive. He said... Go me $50. (laughs) And it was, we have another cash. and I said, I've had so many bad experiences, all I can say is... No. Henry Barrow is here with a little uh, something. <laughs> with a bottle of booze. <laughs> you notice how he keeps the decanter with him at all times? Oh, my God. Henry, how you doing? That was a quick... Uh, were you really over there when we, uh, Rainier was on the phone, or was that just a taste? It takes forever <laughs> to get that taste and smell out of your system. Unbelievable. The great Henry Barrow, who hasn't aged more yeah. than 20 or 30 years since he got out of here, is back. That's right. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm great. So you're doing the Dolphin Games this year again, huh? Oh, really? Back on the sideline. <laughs> yeah, that's the rumor that I hear. I hear they're going to Waxy. I just want to... Ron Harrison mind. and Henry Barrow. That'd be good. Because they hate us like poison. Wake us up once in a while. Yeah. Or? So, now let's see. Are you and Mikey both drinking out of that same flask, or is that just uh, personal? Well, no, we have wine at nine every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And Ron don't participate in any of that either, does he? No. no I'm sure we he have doesn't. a separate bottle for him. Yeah, good. That's great. He's probably going to call you again. He's driving and listening right now. Who's he that? to go down to the Keys. Mikey Ron Harrison. or Harrison, one of those guys? Yeah. One of those Goyam? Well, that'll be great. Can you believe that he's here? Yeah, I heard that coming in. It's shocking. terrific. It's yeah, shocking. It was shocking. He yeah. got sunburned. Now, who's bringing the food yes. here, by the way, uh, George? Is Flora's coming by with about... We have uh, four different people bringing food today. Oh, great. I'm not touching any of it, by the way. I'll sit here and watch everybody eat. 
you, it's fa- you know, the same, oh, yeah. you used to say the same thing ten years ago. Oh, thanks. Henry just That's gave that. me one of those uh, Mike Greenery suppositories. That's, That's those, a beautiful thing. Those Thank little you. little hand roll thing they did over there. Uh-huh. Yeah, I bet you they have a lot of hand roll things over there at Waxy. <laughs> well, th- you're leaving? A little while. Oh. Come in. Yeah, we don't want to take away Tom's thunder here. Tom is looking for an audience. Yeah. Well, are you like in semi-retirement now or what? What are you talking about? Well, no, I mean... I three stories in the paper today. I understand that, but it's just like you're like keeping a low profile. You used to be all over the place. No, I'm doing Ed's show tonight. Like I said, you're keeping a low profile. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what are you, oh, big fans? God. Oh, you're filling in for Kaplan. Yeah. Don't you wish you were on a station, though, where somebody could hear you at night? Well, if you're east of I-95, it's yeah. fine. I like the way that uh, um, Paxson has to have two stations. Are you aware in. of this, by the way? That no. Paxson has got, like, the heat. We're complaining they wanted to drop, or they wanted to get off the station because they wouldn't put him on the light bulb. So now he's on FTL to cover Broward is, and INZ to cover Dave. Is Pete Bolger on FTL? <laughs> Pete Bolger is the PD of FTL. Yeah. He's gone from Zeta to INZ yeah. to the light bulb. And, and he's the program... And I understand that they have an opening at Piper High next week at KPX, so <laughs> I think it's a little too upscale for Pete. Rose Folger... Right. ...is the program director of FTL. Correct. Well, it's owned now by Paxson Owns Yeah, Paxson all. Owns... Buddy Paxson Bud. Owns everything. He owns like 500 radio stations. Oh, yeah. Now. Up there, too. He Up just bought too. two from a Russ in the Oasis. Russ keeps selling them stations. going to buy the Panthers. No, he's not. Wayne will be the owner. In fact, you should write that in the paper on Monday. You should be the first guy. Wayne will be the owner. Take it to the bank. What about that million four? He's losing a month. <laughs> I think uh, Gary Bettman is going to make him an offer he can't refuse. I think the league may just, now, just you, subsidize a little bit of Are you loss. saying, see, I'm out of, I'm like from out of town. I don't know what you people are talking about. What do you mean about? you're from out of town? Well, I don't live we here We were discussing anymore. just yesterday on this show the uh, house that used to live in, in the uh, bird sanctuary yes. there on, on, in Kendall yes. on Sunset. Still standing. Stands by every day. Do you? Yeah. Do you, uh, I do heard, you like yes, I heard you, well, kind of, how do I put it, uh, <laughs> How do I put it with, with, when we're on the air? You got your uh, dump button ready? Do you go by and, uh, you know, no. tinkle on the site? As a matter of fact, my mother was looking for an apartment a year or so ago. She was thinking of moving down, and we stopped there. And I said, you know, you used to live here? And she said, who? I said, the bird. She said, well, let's go somewhere else. <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, I just noticed something. Yeah. I've been gone, what, three years almost. Is it three? And... and I would have thought you would have gotten rid of Randy's chair here, the one with all the stains oh, on it. Oh, that's the Randy Rose here. Memorial chair. <laughs> it's still here. And you'd be amazed at what other people have done on that since. Are you saying the Dolphins are leaving IOD? Is that what you're saying? We have one more year. One more season. And, and so then you can bet your life that they're leaving. You can go to the bank on it. And you think they'll go to the... Where do you think they'll go? I don't know, because there's all kinds... You see, Beasley just bought... You're out of the market. Beasley just bought QAM yeah. and the Kiss... Really? And uh, they don't want QAM. They want to sell it. I wouldn't be surprised if Wayne buys QAM and puts all the sports on there. Are you hearing that? Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing that. It's yeah. all sports anyway, isn't it? No, well, I... alleged, besides Lardass Limbaugh and all their 80 <laughs> friendly sports bait. Oh, they run the station Rush? That quickly? I mean, it was just bought by Beasley. Are you going to move it again that quickly? Oh, sure. they can. Do... Don't you understand I know you the way it is yeah. now? It's like the FCC, it's like yeah. playing cards. It's this like a deck of cards. This is getting like what's-his-name show, the guy from San Francisco. Alex Bennett. With the chairs and look what happened to him. Look what it did for him, yeah. Oh, you weren't you were already out of here when uh, Alex Bennett came in. You see, we did you a real favor. Uh, I met him. Did you? Oh yeah. How did you meet him? Alex Bennett, is that what you said? Yeah. Well, he came in, he tried out for that, and he came in and did your show for a week while you were on vacation. And uh I uh played sidekick. Did you? Yeah. To Alex Bennett? I swear to God. Do you think I'll ever forget it? You see, you didn't hear it because you, you were out of town. Then he got the afternoon show, and I may have still been here then. Live from beautiful North Bay Village, where yeah. he was busted by the police department for being a total loser, it's a salute to Alex Bennett! The man who constantly exercised his neck by looking over his shoulder. The man from California who didn't have a tan. The man who found it great fun to rip his fellow workers, but when ripped himself, turned into a sniveling, crying, complaining candy ass. The man who finally showed some semblance of intelligence when he packed his bags and got the hell out of town. One of the few men who could actually go back to an old job in an old town, telling old jokes and doing even older we salute you, Alex Bennett. South Florida has never seen a bigger paranoid, a bigger backstabber, a bigger crybaby. Alex Bennett, you're a complete asshole. Oh! 
I, yeah. I think that might have put him over the edge, that promo. Yeah, that's him. That's, the, that's, that Alex. Was Alex, that's yeah. Alex I'm talking about. That's, that's the one. Oh, look at that, a bunch of cards. Thank you, Brett. Where's uh, Jake C., by the way? He's probably hiding in a closet somewhere now. So, I, anyway, uh, Henry, I, it's nice to see you, but I thought it was one of the most tasteless things I've ever seen. When you came into the news booth this morning and said to Maribel... I have just tasted your snack. <laughs> I thought that was the most grotesque, tasteless thing, so to speak. I was trying to think, when was the first time I ever met you personally? Yeah. And I remembered it was at a Rod McEwen news conference I was sent to cover. Right. In which you stole the show. I did? Yeah. By doing what? He he held a news conference before Rod McEwen oh. and chatted with everyone. About, I don't even remember that. by the time that. Rod McEwen came out, it was during uh, the Anita, Anita Bryant, Bryant yeah. fight. Oh. But you know where it was? It was in that, it's a fish market yeah. now up there on Biscayne. That's, right. <laughs> That's where it was. No, it is. It's a fish uh -huh. market. <laughs> and we had rented that for the uh, meetings of the Dade County uh, fans or whatever yeah. it was. Look at what? Look at that person standing there. You know that person? Suds? I hadn't seen him in a long time. Yeah. It was just neat to see him. Yeah, that person. There yeah, he is. That person and there. And Adam and George and Tom and Dick and Harry. There you go. <laughs> oh, Tom and Dick are there. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. at least Tom. <laughs> so anyway, 1037. Let me do a little uh, bit. We've got a lot of spots here, okay? So don't uh, just dummy up, Glenn. 23 to 11 at WYOD. What you... All over South Florida, baseball players are getting ready for the new season. And so are we. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, March 5th, 6th, and 7th. Talk Marlins baseball with Defoe and the Marlins live from spring training on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Yeah, you're right. It was sad. We missed the open net there. Stu Barnes, calm down, Stewie. Stick it in the open net. We should have won that game last night. But, hey, it's one of those things. We had like uh, two or 300 people left by the end of the game. You talk about people leaving early. Oh, man, did they bail out of there last night. Well, that was about a three-and-a-half-hour game, wasn't it? Huh? Yeah, and it was the longest. Man, the officiating was the worst, and they couldn't get their act together. And the linesmen wanted to be the stars. Not just the referee, but the linesmen wouldn't drop the goddamn puck. They would just stand there and, like, uh, taunt the players. And then the players would get over-anxious. Then they'd throw them out of the face-off circle, and they would do it again and again and again. And it just never stopped. Well, if they build out in Sunrise, you'll be able to go home between periods and walk the dogs. Right, exactly. So huh. anyway, I don't want to talk... I beg your pardon? I have no idea who that is. Uh, where's the food? Yeah, I didn't recognize him either. Boy, I wouldn't have recognized you for I, all the tea and I China. know, I had no clue. Is that incredible? What? What is it, a new look? Yeah. <laughs> I'm wanted in 17 states. I had to grow a beard. Yeah, and stuff. I, I can imagine that. Too bad you're not wanted by 17 stations. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's the way it goes. So, excuse you shouldn't have started with that thing about the game because you know him. I didn't say anything. And I know. But I was and wondering. I'm, see, that's a good thing. There's no room for your head on the table. Because <laughs> he used to put his head down on the table and get very upset. Of course, now the fact that you know there's four lunches coming, that probably makes you feel a little bit better. Can I take like one or two of these calls? I don't want to seem rude, but Miami, hello. Yeah, uh, Neil? Yes, sir? Uh, I'm calling on behalf of the Spirit Restaurant to congratulate you on your 20 years of uh, hardship and torture. Thank you so much. What restaurant is that? The Spirit Restaurant. The Spirit? We would like to donate uh, four tickets to the Grand Prix on, uh, uh, for some uh, lucky listener. Yeah. Uh, for today's uh, race and tomorrow's race. And how do they get them? I, well, they can come by the restaurant, the Spirit, and pick it up. Uh, and what do they do? Have to, like, how many meals do they have to buy? 20 or 30? None. No okay. meals. And I'll bet she gets to give the address now, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course. Well, if the, the There's nothing like exploiting my anniversary to plug your restaurant. What's wrong with that? That's not that's the epitome of this town. That's what it's all about. <laughs> I like it. Well, we, uh, I'm a first-time caller, and uh, I've enjoyed your show for years and years. Well, thank and you so much. Where is this joint? I mean, where is this great establishment of yours? Come on. It's on 836 and the uh, Northwest 72nd Avenue, Miles yeah. Berry Road. Right. And Fat Rich knows all about it. Oh, so Fat Rich put you up to this, huh? No, no he didn't. Sure but, he did. Uh, you know, he's our computer uh, expert. Oh, that's what this is all about. Okay. That's why we're losing okay. money. Okay, great, exactly. <laughs> well, I'll give you some pointers on that later on. <laughs> okay. okay, pal. Good luck to you. All right, thank okay. you. By the way, also, anybody wants to drive by the airport and uh, see any of our friends over there, 
What uh, is that all about? I, what I is what about? That? Drive by the airport. I'm sorry. We have a bunch of, uh, they call themselves the Cuban youth, not to be confused with the Buchanan youth. Oh, boy. But the uh, Cuban youth, and they decided that a good way to uh, bring attention to the fact that we had this uh, unfortunate episode last weekend would be to g drive very slowly all through the airport at Miami International. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> just drive around very slowly. At least it's not laying down in the streets like we had the last time. So this is a big improvement. We're starting to move in the right direction. I can't believe it. There's, there's public relations, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Gotta really get sympathy how to win for friends, cause. how to win over the community. They sure understand how to win the rest of the community over to any cause by yeah. getting in everybody's way and getting them pissed <laughs> off and worked up. It's only going to be 86 in the shade today. People are going to be sweating and cursing. It's the weekend. They're trying, trying to get to out of town, plane, yeah. trying to catch their plane. And, of course, uh, that's the way. Now, did you drive down here? Did you fly in? What did I, you? I drove down. Drove I had, down? Yeah, I had some other stuff to do up in Palm Beach County. Yeah. Oh, so, you're, so just, you are going to jail. And all. Good, luck. <laughs> Good luck to you. N nothing to do with radio, so I, I oh. thought I would do this. You're not too. going to JNO? I thought that would have been the great coup that Boy Gary would have had is to bring you on here at JNO. Boy Gary there? He's starting he Monday morning. He's uh, going to be the I PD and, and do the morning show. Oh what? God. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, Gregory. What is he going to do in the morning? Suck. <laughs> and Gregory Benjamin what? Now, is moving uh, over to the uh, uh, country. Yeah, what is country, it? Country club. Country. Are you? Point of course, you know that's the reason that nobody knows who you are anymore, Skylers, because you're always off mic anyway. Yeah. Well, I was just trying to, you know, shout through Tom Jicka's head. No, but, yeah. he's trying to do the Dave Caprita style. That's you know? right. Oh, that's right on the floor. Oh, when I mean, the food gets here, yeah. try it. And then in about two weeks, we'll get a call for you asking for money. Now wait a minute. Yeah. Gregory Benjamin is going to play country. Is that what you're saying? That's what right. he's this is mind -boggling. And the worst part of it is he finally found a niche there. He had like an eight share or something in the morning on JNO. Yeah. Only by default, I guess. But he was doing well. And now he's going over to the country because Gary uh, Bruce is coming in. Yeah. Well, not just morning. that. He can't stand the other assholes who are in management there with whom uh, Gary Bruce will fit in Is anybody supposed perfectly. to be hearing you or what? <laughs> I'm <laughs> speaking right into a damn microphone. Yeah. Oh, well, it's not turned on. Maybe that's why you're not on the air anymore. Maybe yeah. your voice just doesn't carry, you know. No. He's got the microphone all the way down his throat and you still can't hear him. Just want to say that Gary Bruce will fit in perfectly oh, with the other duplicitous you know, assholes at WJNO. Thank you, and good night. You know what we have to play now? What the hell was that name of that thing uh, that you did? Oh, the thing. Well, there were two of them. Could you be more vague? No, the one. 20, 20 years. The one. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. First, there was. Oh, oh yeah. What? Nobody's going to talk this up? I don't think so. Jeez, I'm offended. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> Don't step on it. Wow. Has he still got it or what? I but, hope so. But the... But uh, I can't give it away. That's the problem. No, but wait a minute. The, the one that... Here it is. This is the one that was the award winner. Mm. So anyway, yeah. we're expecting Phil Salzman to call any second now. <laughs> and the food is here. We want to thank Boone again profusely. <laughs> There's enough food here to feed the Chinese army. Why? Why? <laughs> one open line in Dade and one in Broward. Mm. Mm. Boy, this is good. Why? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. Everything's fine. I'm just sitting here, and you're over there cackling. I think Calder was right about you. Just relax. What, bird? Here, give me your finger. Now stick your finger in this piece of pita bread, okay? Okay. I guess some of the food has arrived anyway, huh? <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Thanks, J.C. Man. Don't stay away too I long. Bit, I just bit your finger off, and you're still laughing. <laughs> mm. and, and you know what? It's not bad. You got nine more of these, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, put a little melted mozzarella on this, and you really got something. <laughs> and it's okay on the Atkins, too, is what I understand. Oh, good. That may have been the best thing Skyler ever did. I think so. Jesus. I think right there. But if then I, it was, I was gonna, yeah, I, there was always I'm Young Americans. Neil. Yeah, well, that's kind of in a different yeah, genre. Yeah. They, let's they can not... play the CDs if they want to hear that one. So that's old. Oh, look at that. There's my check from the sisters for three million. This is from David Caton. From David Caton. That's beautiful. Oh, I love it. Okay. It uh, sounds like it's ticking, too. Thanks a lot, David. Okay. 
And, uh, you know, the American Flickers Association. Okay, look at this. Stuff is coming in here. Boy, this makes me feel like I've almost ac accomplished something here for 20 years, like learning how to be a freeloader. That's really what I've learned. <laughs> That's what I should have said on the, both of those articles. The only thing I've really learned in 20 years is how to be a good snorer. What is it, six stations? Well, I was trying to figure it out. Melissa was asking me, and I said, How I many stations have I been on? How come I can't? Is that mic really, like, working or what? I have it open, but it doesn't <laughs> seem to be doing it. because Jicka keeps moving it, and oh. he has to dump the pot because he's doing this like there's an earthquake <laughs> yeah. in here. How many stations have I been on? K-A-T, uh, N-W-S, I-N-Z, Zeta, and here. That's only five last time I checked. Did I leave anybody out? Let me think. You did double duty at one, though, didn't you? What do you mean by that? Didn't you? Where was it? You, was it I-N-Z? You left and came back? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. No? no, well, NWS, I left for a month and went to Nashville and came back. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, that, famous, that's like, yeah. the famous Nashville yeah. trip. Yeah, WLAC. That was a lot of fun. They tend to be a little clannish up there in Tennessee. <laughs> with a C or a K or however you want to spell it. Yeah, that was like a little bit of vacation. Well, these people are definitely not going to wait. Here's uh, Dr. Vots. Dr. Watt. Neil, I just called to give you congratulations for your 20 years of, of loyal community service. Thanks, Doc. And uh, I hear you did a great show last Sunday night, too, by the way. I, I, That's uh, what you told I me. Think I had a good time, and I got a lot of callers. And I all set up. Them. I got news for you. If I could set up all my calls like you did, i have a full board every day, too. <laughs> well, I didn't tell them what to say when they called, and I just let a lot of people know that I was going to be on. And you, right. You've always told me that only about 1% of listeners ever call in. So I figure if I let 150 people know I was going to be on, then 1.5 people would call in. But yeah. it worked out better than that. Uh huh. Anyway, you're wearing that candy cane jacket today? No, I'm not. I burned that. <laughs> yeah. You sound like you're absolutely glowing. I buried it with your cola catsentine at the cat. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's I buried a, that's it right next to Yeah, it's way over your head. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm calling to compliment you on your communication skills, your cooperation, and I think you're a great example of how people can take care of themselves and get themselves healthier as they shall we say, mature. And you also called to thank me for uh, reminding you of the Atkins diet and all the weight you've lost, probably. Oh, absolutely. No would... two ways. You, you've, you've been as good for me. I hope, I hope I've been as good for you as you've been for me. Now, no since you did that, that uh, audition there on Sunday on that Neil Won't Like It show, did Steve Nichol call you back? No, he never did. Let's just go get drunk. Well, listen, just, just sit there by the phone. Let your patients cool their heels. Sit there by the phone. No. It's, uh, that call's coming any second. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the funny part is that he makes a show called Neil Won't Like It. Yeah. But if you'd heard it, you probably would have liked it, so he can't even make a show that Neil won't like. There you go. Oh, you want to bet? <laughs> <laughs> Tune in the rest of the weekend, Mark. We'll see ya. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. I now, like that the speaking, doctor's calling. Speaking of weekend shows yeah. at IOD. Oh, is that what you're doing here? Believe me, we could use you now. No, no, I'm not Trust speaking me. of me. Desperately. I, I have heard rumors yeah. that w one Irene Richard is going to be doing a weekend talk show Boy. at WIOD. Is this true? Well, I didn't want to let it out of the bag. The rumor has it that we have a travel show starting on yes, the weekend, and the hostess is going to be... <laughs> it really is Irene Richards. How do you like that? So it is true. Can you believe that I still have that cart by the way? <laughs> huh? That cart is... Uh... Is she on right after Meg Green? No, Meg's uh, history. She's too big for us now. She's on Channel 4. She's a big star in our six or whichever one it is. Six, right? She's all over the place. Nobody Giving knows. that bogus information to her. How do you find programs in this market? This TV stations are all weird, you know. They're all... Well, you don't move to Lakeland and you keep track of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. And by the way, speaking of the weather fairy, uh, I noticed, was it your column today? I forget who wrote it. I try to avoid looking at that. But anyway, I think Tom had the column about, yeah, about the uh, ratings still suck at Channel not, 4. Yeah, they're eighth and an eight, uh, eight station field. Yikes. See, they had that big interest there in the beginning. You know, when they first, the first day when Brian came on, they, they, plus they had like, they saturated us and every station in the market with spots to promote the fact that Brian Norcross, the weather fairy, was going to be the news fairy. And so the <laughs> first day in the overnights, it looked like, oh my God, the Channel 4 ratings are going through the roof. Do you know that they fired Barbara Sloan? Did Amazing. you know Barbara? Yes. One of the nicest, yes. one of the best. I mean, everybody there loved her. She was a real pro. Real pro. She yeah. was great. She was one of the sweetest people I've ever met in my life. And they canned her ass because they wanted to bring in some young bimbet. And then they wanted to bring uh, Brian over there for whatever. And I, wh to what, do what are news? they thinking about this guy? Well, this guy's not a guys, news guy. They've got a lot of... My, this is just my opinion, but I think you're going to see that as everyone's contract runs out, every one of the old people there will be let go. Really? That's my opinion. Not Dave Game. Cool. They did take him off. They well, to cut the food budget <laughs> down a lot, I'll tell you that. And the old Channel 4 call letters, WTVJ, is now Channel 6. It's right. the NBC station. <laughs> yeah. 
And, and what wonder, a concept. And you wonder why I'm confused? And Channel 4 is, uh, yeah, see, yeah. Like, like Tom said, uh, you know, move to Lakeland and you'll find out a lot about what's there. It's not really that tough, you know. Okay. Because you look on the air. Well, I'm kind of overwhelmed. You see Tony Segreto without the suspenders. You know you're on the TV day. Oh, okay. And you see uh, Dave Game covering the screen, blanketing your screen. You <laughs> well, know you're on FOR. Yeah. yeah, they took him off the air. Yeah, I just kind of, they did? Yeah, because they wanted you to see the new Bim Bet news anchors. Uh, and he was kind of blocking the that I must get a satellite dish. Yeah. And did I you did. Do it? Yes, I did. A big dish? Yes. Great. I've had it for about almost two and a half years. You know that Tom had a dish before I did even. Yeah. I almost talked you into it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I really enjoy it. It's very good. I just wanted to In mention fact, that. In fact, Fat Rich was the one that got me my first dish, illegally, of course, with some uh, Arab from uh, Israel or somewhere. <laughs> and then, so that means Tom and you and I and Rich, that's four people in one room. Skylar, of course, can't afford a dish. I haven't got cable. Yeah. yeah. Not if he what? Could afford, he can't even afford a set. We much less a trailer uh, for pizza. Yeah. Now, I know you're kidding. I mean, it's yeah, like... you do, do you? <laughs> well, I'm sure the reason... Got any that... openings at ABC Liquors by any chance? Says he doesn't have cable. I'm sure the reason that Glenn got the dish is you don't want to miss all that sports. Right. They do sports on the dish? In fact, probably the first channel you got was GN so you could see all the Cub games. Because I know you were a big fan. Why would you want a dish if you don't want to watch sports? Oh, I didn't, know they, had, I didn't know they had it on there. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't know Channel 4 and Channel 6, I mean. He's watching the Sundance channel. But didn't, uh, didn't I see this hockey game a few weeks ago and... Uh, the puck was like glowing blue, yeah. you know, and yeah. they hit it and it goes zoom, and you could see That's it. Exactly. You how could was see it, it going to go? The... <laughs> that was exactly how it went. Well, yeah, there's a, there's something you might be thinking about uh, doing. Do the uh, so audio, the sound effects for the fox tracks. Zoom. Yeah, that's exactly how it well, went. They just don't understand that. They think that people don't watch the game. You know, this whole thing about not following the puck. There aren't that many hockey fans. They have to develop hockey fans. They don't need blue lights around the Yeah, well, but everything that Fox appeals to is like a prepubescent mentality. That's their whole idea. Every, all of their program is presented at that level. So they figure even if it's a hockey game, they have to appeal to little kids. And the little kids loved it. Anybody over the age of 10 hated it because, you know, it just interfered with your enjoyment of the game. And it, it's like it was while well, watching a video game. I've never heard a hockey fan say they had a problem. No, the guy from John Shannon who produces Hockey Night in Canada said they've been doing their show for 50 years. They've never had one call from anybody <laughs> saying, I can't see the puck. Why don't you do something? I can't follow the puck. But, hey, that's Fox for you. Now, that's Chris Moore has some problems following the puck. Well, there you go. Speaking of Fox. So, anyway, it's 1054. He'll be out next year. 1054 at WIOD for almost 50 years. Mike Cigars in Bay Harbor. What happened to Henry, by the way? Is he? Oh, look at that. He took the flask with him, and he's on the floor. <laughs> well, I told you he could be the next Dave Caprita. The opinions expressed by the host, guest, or callers on WIOD are not necessarily those of the station or its sponsors. All WIOD programs are copyright 1996 by WIOD Incorporated. No tape recordings or transcripts may be created or distributed without prior written consent of WIOD Incorporated. Ay, Dios mío, esos carros. Okay, there's a little sample of our traffic that's coming up at the top of the hour. No, seriously, that's our new criteria that uh, you have to, first of all, not speak very good English, and you have to have a great ass. Yeah. Or, in the case of the morning traffic guy, be a great ass. So how do you like how our is new... She, how, how is she going to report them driving slowly at the airport? <laughs> very slowly and very carefully, and, have, and probably in heavily Spanish, so we don't understand it. Yeah, we have a new traffic service that's, uh, you've got to admit, something new and different. It's called Incoherent Unintelligible Traffic. But so I never, see... we never know if they're accurate or not because you can't understand what they're saying. <laughs> on, the, on the dish, some yeah. very interesting programming out of uh, Mexico. I right. Guess you see some of that. You know, He's the only one that watches Morelos. Telemundo. Telemundo. But, you know, you Telemundo what? Well, that's one of the channels. But that's not on... Telemundo is the network. Well, yeah, but I mean, I see the Telehit channel. is gone, unfortunately. That's the only yeah. channel I used to like with the music from uh, Mexico, Telehit. Yeah, remember that's that? That's why I discovered Luis Miguel, of course. Right. Uh, that, that's where you, you see the music videos. You think the music videos in this country are a little, uh, you know, wild? Yeah. Where do you see the uh, Spanish music videos? Yeah. Uh-oh. Do you have a special gift from your newest fans? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. What? 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 Oh my God! Now what is that? Is that uh, what are those on there? I'm afraid to ask at this point. Marty Bell is bringing me something and putting it in my lap. Oh my God! It's a it's a Marty Bell cake. Look at the size of that thing. Ay Dios mío, esos carros. Oh my God! Look at the size oh, yeah. of those cheeks. Is that what those? Are? Even Al Goldstein never saw an ass like that. Happy anniversary. Thanks. Uh, Thanks, sweetheart. In any language, you're okay in our book, okay? Yeah, yeah, and stayed away from Adam because he is just uh, smoldering. What yeah. Okay, <laughs> little Joey. How you doing, Joey? How's it going, Neil? Great. You got 30 seconds. Congratulations. Thanks. It's your 20th, and I've been listening to you for 10 years. 
How about that? Unreal. And you st- when are you getting married, by the way? Uh, four months from yesterday. Boy, I tell you, you ought to see. Have you ever met uh, little Joey's uh, fiance? Not his fiance. Oh, brother. What, what does that She's mean? She's a knockout. Oh. I'm telling you right now. Better than Mata Bell? Be- well, I'm not going to say better. She's uh, equally outstanding and uh, got almost as great of an ass. Almost. <laughs> yeah. And she's very, very, very concerned about that. Every day she's asking me if it's getting bigger, if it's falling. I hate Yeah, that. you should be asking her that. Yeah, I know. But anyway. Anyway. So th- listen, have a great life, and I'll see you up at the pizza loft. We're having a big celebration tonight. When is that, tonight? Yeah, we have a burning desire at the loft. Exactly. I'll make sure I bring a lighter. Okay, see you, Joey. Bye. Thanks. See you, Henry. Hey, listen, don't uh, bottoms up. <laughs> See you, Neil. Uh, the bottle's almost empty, so I got to go get another one. <laughs> okay, I'm sure Mike. I, I'm sure Mikey's got some reserves for you. Yeah, Mike, Mike and Ron would love to have dropped by, but yeah. they they had a previous bottle. Yeah, and, uh, in the prone position. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks, Henry and Tom. Zong, Kick, and Warfield. Where are you when we need you? WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. News, talk, and entertainment radio. Six ten WIOD. Friday, you bastards. Neil wakes me up in the morning. In the morning. Neil wakes me up with a smile. With a smile, yeah. Drinking my coffee and munching on my donut. With Singapore on the dime. Saying it's too bad he won't be here to uh, hear that great travel show with his close personal friend Irene Richie. Yes, I'm just uh, distraught. I bet you I are. Won't, I won't be in town to hear the abo- uh, Oh, look at that. You know something? I can actually eat that now. Wonderful show. You know, it just dawned on me. You don't, don't know about this her. Atkins diet, do you? Mm-hmm. Well, you don't need it. No. But anyway, the bottom line is I can eat all of this stuff now, and as long as I don't eat the bun, I, you know, it's great. Oh. It's on the Atkins. It's okay. Well, you never were into buns. Too heavy. <laughs> that's true. Yes. Adam, on the other hand, that's right, what? is heavily into buns, especially if they're attached to Marty Bell. Look Woo! at that. He's just uh, drooling all over himself. Get him a, a spittle cup or something, will you? Incredible. Oh, my God. And now look at this. We got, oh, I knew he'd muscle in here somewhere. This is a man who has made my life invitation. almost almost invitation. useless. Almost, I don't even have time to... Seriously, have you ever had a situation where you go home and you don't even have time to slip a fart out? I mean, when you walk in the door and the phone is ringing. This man, if there's anybody in, who needs to get a life, this is the guy right here, Rimmer. Nice call on the game last night, too. By the way, look at this. Signed by Luke Robitaille. Look at that, my good, close, personal friend. So where's Luke? This is a good start. Where the hell is Luke? Look at the size of that thing. It's a hockey stick signed autograph personally to Neil. Happy 20th anniversary. Your friend, Luke Robitaille. I always knew he was my type. He told me to get a hobby, right? I got yeah. a hobby. And what Snore is for Neil. There you go. Great. Where's my Bill Hewitt? All right, I want you to stand up for this one. Too bad yeah. we're not on television. Uh-oh. Yeah. What is it? Oh, that's beautiful. That's a Panthers uh, jersey with my name on the back. And what's the number on it? 20 with a Luke Robitaille number on the back. That's a beautiful thing. Although I guess, I, see, that was bad. I should have said with Brian Scrudlin's number on the back. Yeah, he's going to... I'm uh, just kidding, Brian. It was just a joke. They're going to retire the number now. Yeah. Because you're going to wear it. I would think so. Especially Put after it that, on. Especially Put after the that penalty on. you got last night. <laughs> Awful officiating. The worst I've ever seen in my life. And the linesman, the most obnoxious, uh, hateful... What do you mean, put it on? Are you orchestrating put it on. here, too? Yeah. Put this on, okay? Stick it up your ass, River. Put, put the jersey put on. on. We want to get you a picture with on. the jersey on. I think this was once worn your by name Denise on it. Potvin. No, it's actually, like a, actually, it's like Dennis... It's like a little girly jersey. It was worn by Denise. <laughs> actually, Dennis's uh, store makes all the jerseys for the Panthers. Yeah, and they you made... you got to put it on. Are you going to try to tell me that Denise Potvin, his store, made this for me? That, well... Courtesy of the Florida Panthers. Oh, the Florida it's Panthers. It's a gift from the Panthers, for right? From who? Now, who's responsible for this? Uh, Greg Brian. Boris and the Panther Hockey Club. What is it? Oh my God! Look who we got here. It's Old Sour Grapes himself. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to. Oh, it's not your birthday. It's anniversary. Oh, Grapes, happy how you anniversary. doing? Anniversary. 
I Happy can't birthday, believe this. dear, and anniversary, dear Neil. Happy birthday to you. Do you hear I, like that? Rimmer just brought me an autographed Luke Robitaille stick. How do you like that? And oh, I told him, has it got a mask on it? And I told him where to stick it. Yeah, it's okay. got one of those big, heavy uh, Max, Ma Max on it. Now, listen, okay. I want to tell you something, okay? Can I tell you something, Cherry? Sure. Will you stop with all this baloney uh, alibi? I'm watching. I'm in tears every day of the week. Now, the Leafs haven't won a game since before Foster Hewitt was a baby, okay? And every week, you come on there on that damn show of yours, and you're saying, well, they're a little bit tight. They're squeezing the uh, sticks. They're squeezing something too tight, but I don't think it's the sticks. You know what I'm saying, Don? <laughs> What are they They're squeezing? squeezing something real tight, okay? What are they squeezing? I don't know. I can't say it on the air, but you can use your own imagination. Hey, they're sticking the joint out. Talk about a choke outfit. What tough the hell is this? Breaks. Huh? Remember, have you ever seen a team get tough breaks like those guys? Tough breaks. I'm telling you. I'm a Leaf fan, too. A closet yeah, Leaf right. fan. Sure Obviously, Panthers first and foremost. Closet, but growing, they, growing they up in... like those guys that hide in the closet, right? Well, exactly. hey, <laughs> especially right. Neil. But, especially uh, Denise Pot fan. <laughs> You know, the way they seem to lose, I mean, they're winning in the third period, and they're I, giving up I, bad I, goals. I, I've and... been watching hockey a long time. I have never seen a team up 2 nothing, 3-1 yep. for about two months now. Yep. They get stupid penalties at the wrong time. I mean, it's incredible. They never, I've, they've never got an... You know, once in a while, you might get an easy goal, right? Yeah. Never. No months, lucky bounce. They're like a lot of guys I know, Grapes. They just keep blowing it. Don't worry about it. Do you know what I'm saying? Same thing as squeezing it, right? Right. They're very close, very similar. So now we got this big trade. They finally got rid of some of the dead weight there yesterday. They got rid of that big goon, Sergio Momesso, and poor Billy Berg, who hasn't been the same since Peter Zezel and Mark Osborne left. And I, uh, I, I don't understand Momesso. I hear he is living in the town. He's making close to a million bucks. Yeah. It just seems as if he didn't care. I, I'm predicting that he goes to uh, New York and he turns it on. I mean, he, I don't understand the guy. He just looked <laughs> like he didn't care making yeah. a million bucks. That's right. He, don't, he didn't care. Hey, Grapes, the Leafs' luck's going to change because, uh, you know what the Toronto Maple Leafs are sending Neil for his 20th anniversary? What? A jersey autographed by the whole team with a number 20 on it. Oh, all right. Bob Pulford's old number. Oh, yeah? And after only three years of begging, he's finally getting me a tape uh, with Bill Hewitt on there from the 67 Stanley Cup. You know, Game Bill seven Hewitt, of the finals. Uh, when I was doing we won the Memorial Cup. Billy Hewitt, uh, we did, he did his first broadcast uh, back in 51-52. Really? Yes, back in, uh, and he was the broadcaster, so I just thought I'd throw that in, see he's uh, sort of your hero. Well, you better keep working on that Hall of Fame thing for me, Grapes, because, you know, if you don't get it, I already got uh, Swivel Mouth working on it up there in Montreal now, you know. Who's Dick, Swivel Mouth? Dick Irvin. Oh, yeah. I got, I got old Dick Irvin working on it. We had him on the air, and he agreed with me. He said he's sitting on the uh, he's on the committee, and he's going to put the name on the table. And uh, he says I'm absolutely right. It's a grotesque oversight. And he says don't count on that cherry to get it done. He'll never get it done. Oh, me, me with the Hall of Fame. They don't let me near it. I'll tell I'm you that. I'm sure of that. You know where Grapes is calling, or where, where we got him? We got him in L.A. He and Rose are out in Los Angeles to do Hockey Night in Canada Saturday night, and uh, talked to Timmy yesterday at home, Don. Yes. And uh, he told me where you're staying. They're in Beverly Hills. You're really treating yeah. Rose well Rose, this week. Listen, why not? You only go through this way once. I was with him at McLean last night, right? Yeah. Get this. He orders caviar, uh, 120 bucks. Can you imagine that? I played a whole I played a whole week when I was in the American League for 120 bucks. And, and this bucks. wasn't Ron McLean. This was Doug McLean. I knew yeah. there was a reason we uh, folded up in that game last night. We didn't have no coach on the bench. He was out there with Cherry. How about uh, what? Are, you're not going to ask me about uh, Gretzky? Well, that's what, what I was going to get to. Yeah, what, yeah. What's you know going something? on? I don't want to even waste. Now you go ahead and say what you want. I wouldn't even waste my time with that guy. I'm so sick and tired. There's some real good articles that they were quoting from last night. It's about time somebody ripped him an ass. I'm tired of his greed. I'm tired of this bull crap. Yeah, he scored a goal last night. Big stinking deal. Wayne Gretzky is a shadow of what he used to be. He's divisive. He sits around. He tells the general manager and a coach who can be on the team and who can't be on the team. I hope Mike Keenan gets all the more grief from him, just like they got in L.A. And by the way, look how great L.A. was with him the last uh, however many years. Look how they stunk the joint out the last couple of years. What can I say? In addition to which, if you remember three years ago, which I know you remember, when he, when he cheap-shotted your buddy Dougie Gilmore there in the playoffs in that uh, sixth game and should have got a five-minute major and wound up staying in the game and scoring a winning goal in overtime. That's your buddy Wayne Gretzky. I'm stunned. So as a Leafs fan, he can blow it out his ass. How do you like that? I'm stunned. I can't say a word. I cannot, can't top that one, Rimmer. Because you know it's all true. That's why. 
So listen, get get get. Some, now, also, I don't want any more bad news on my anniversary here. And look at the food pouring in here. I wish you could be here to see this. You just pass out. Let me ask you something. You guys are in L.A., which pisses me off. You should be in Dallas now, okay? You should always be wherever the Leafs are playing. Forget about those frogs, okay? We know right, how you feel. I, I, listen to this one. Now, don't, tell, don't do... tell me that Coley and Harry Neal are with you guys in L.A. and are doing that second game. No, they're not. Oh, Coley thank... and them are uh, down in uh, Dallas. Oh, thank God for that. I don't know what I'm doing out here, but Rose wanted a vacation, so I'm out here. <laughs> oh, that explains it. There you go. And the sun's not shining. Yeah. Well, listen, tell uh, tell my, tell my Pat Burns that they better win when they said. I'm surprised he's still there, you know, because you know he's going to wind up being the guy that's going to take the fall. I don't think so. No? No, I think that... Uh, I love Pat Burns. Uh, yeah, he, Pat's going to be there. Honestly, I'm not making excuses for them, but I, I have never seen... Uh, I've never seen... But I got news like... for you. I got news for you, Grapes. Calgary is on the verge of catching them. Winnipeg has got no. three games in hand. They're going to catch them. You know, they're not going to make the playoffs if they don't win one sometime this year. You know, They one are more... going to make the playoffs, and they're going to make some noise. If not, you phone me up and berate me like you did just did Grapesy, okay? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll make noise like you never heard if they don't make it this year. Well, listen, happy anniversary and many more of them, and keep going and keep squeezing those things, okay? We're squeezing them, Grapes. All right. Right. Okay, thanks. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. Uh, there goes Don Cherry. I like the way he always says toodaloo. That butches up his image. Those Canadians go nuts when he says that. Look at well, look at the food in here. If you look at the size of that cake, I have never seen anything that big since JC walked out. It's been, look at the size of it's that. It's been great. We've just been eating uh, up a storm. Oh, well, I was out with Don Cherry. Yeah. You ignore it. See, it's like old times all it's over great. again. I'm talking sports, and you're eating and oh, ignoring it. We've just, the food is unbelievable. See, there you go. And now you're done. Oh, shoot. I'm done with what? No, but now I'm doing a spot, so just keep eating. Oh, good. Eleven sixteen at WIOD. The 610 WIOD Armored Car is loaded with Miami Grand Prix tickets. And today from noon till 1 p.m., we'll hand them out free at Hooters, Town & Country Center, and Kendall. Free tickets to see the Indy cars. Noon today at Hooters and Kendall. From News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Thanks, Anna Maria. What is it? It's Hopefully it's worth a lot of money and I can get out of here. Oh, look at that. Uh, Woo! Uh, is that from Orvieto's by any chance? Actually, I, I made it myself. You made it yourself. Wow. I happen to be listening to you quite frequently. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. It didn't take too much time. On the bottom, it's like a caricature of me made out of, uh, what would you call it? What is that? It's clay. Like a, a clay. Like it's I said, it's made out of a clay thing. <laughs> and it's on a stand. And I'm sitting on, uh, what is it that I'm sitting on? It's a cup. I'm sitting on a cup. A gold Once cup. worn by Luke Robitaille, right? And I got the mic in my hand, and on the bottom it says 20. Oi! Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful... Well, thanks, Anna Maria. That's very sweet. Thank you. Thanks so much. So that's a beautiful thing. Now, what do we got on here? We got a celebrity caller. Anybody could do a Neil Rogers kind of show and say dirty words. Wow. That kind of broadcasting has appealed to a certain element that I do not desire to appeal to. And who could blame them? Hello? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I can barely hear you. I know how to do a talk show. You ask it, I'll do it. What do you want me to do, Neil? Happy 20th. What do you want? Anything you want. What do you want? What do I want? I'm on an airplane. Yeah. My dime. It's, it's Larry. It's Larry. It is Larry. Yes. Larry, can I ask you one thing? Sure. You owe me $50. That didn't sound like you. What is it? It didn't sound like you. Larry! Blow me Aren't 50 dollars. tired of the same joke? Where the hell are you on the way to? L.A. L.A.? What are you going to do? Who are you going to do out there? Uh, we got, uh, oh, uh, we got Bob Bowles tonight. He's if, if, you, if you could hear how this sounds on the air, Larry, listen to this. Larry! It's Larry in a blender. Larry King and a... Larry, seriously, this is the worst connection I ever heard in my life. Listen. Larry! Yeah. Can you hear me? I hear you. Can you hear me clearly? Because you sound like you're in a goddamn Ron Popeil uh, Vegematic. Oh, Say hello to me. Oh, yeah. All right! Hi, guys! Hi, guys. Now, Hello, listen, are, are, are you, is this the plane that's dropping Pat Buchanan in over the Grand Canyon? Hold on, let me check. All right. Oh, Make sure you do a good job, Larry. Yeah, we got uh, Magic Johnson, too, Monday. Do you? How you doing? We're doing great. 20 years. Isn't that something? 20 years of all this filth and perversion on the radio, and you love every second of it, Who's don't you? Tell it? Well, we do. We know it. Don't you love it, Larry? No. Larry, say you love it. No. no. Come on. Come on, Larry. I want an apology for what... Huh? 
See, every time I try to put him on the spot, all of a sudden, conveniently, it, uh, you can't hear it anymore. How do you like that? Larry! Larry, can you hear me? Larry, I demand an apology for what you said to Bob Green. I will not Who's give it that? to you. Larry! I will not give it to you. What is it? Who is that? Who is what? Who's the band? Who's what? See, there it goes again. Thanks a lot, Larry. You're the best, baby. Bring us back all that money, sweetheart. Okay, there's Larry King. That was that was really him. That was really Larry King. Can you believe that? Is this Oh no, it's off. Oh, yeah. Larry King does the worst congratulatory phone calls in radio. <laughs> yes, that's absolutely correct. Come on, Larry, give me an apology. I will not give it to you. Come on. What a sour ass. That was Larry King. Can you believe that? Well, oh, and you know something? Uh, See, if we could have had a conversation, if he could have heard me, I'd have said, hey, your good friend Rimmer's here waiting to hear about that good job you got him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's another one. He can tell you about uh, jobs from Larry King that never materialized. Yeah, the Crab House is here for you. Hey, how you doing, crab Mr. House. Crab? Oh, yeah. And what, what is that? Your how many meals can I eat? Oh, lobster tails and scallops. Well, that's beautiful, okay? Thank you so much, my amigo. Thank you. Look at that. I got lobster tail. We got scallops. We got uh, weenies. And... From New Age Design Graphics. New Age back. Design Graphics. We got a bunch of buttons. Who's back? Larry. Oh. <laughs> can I hear him now? Larry. I'm here. Oh, there you go. I can almost hear you now. I'm going to move around the plane. Yeah. Well, don't okay. move too much. I don't understand how astronauts could talk from the moon, <laughs> and I can't talk from the plane. Yeah. Sounds like the plane landed. Anyway, no, we're still looking out over the Rockies. You're, st you're still in the air? I'm in the air. How about the plane? Good question, Neil. <laughs> now, you didn't really say... The worst talk radio I ever heard in my life was on WOD. You didn't really say that, did you? Yeah, I did. I can't believe that station, except for you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew he loved me. I knew it. I love Neil Rogers. Do you? I've a problem with the station. This is Whenever the... I'm in Miami... First, whoever the general manager is... Bob uh -oh. Green. In fact, uh -oh. Bob, you know something? Bob is still uh, wiping the tears from his eyes from the last conversation. We said we got Larry King on the phone. He's in the other room right now weeping like a woman. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, he is. I'm going with Bob Mitzvah. Are you? Uh, in about four or five years, he's not old enough yet. When he makes it, yeah. Then, how, about, uh, how about going to his bris? That would be even better. With the guy in the afternoon does a thousand voices, right? Yeah, Phil Henry. He's, he's, he doesn't. He's ashamed of his own. Huh? He's ashamed of his own. Yeah, he's ashamed of his own voice, that's right. Yes, he does other voices. Right. Neil, how do you account for 20 years? How do I feel? How do you feel? I feel uh, like Methuselah on a bad day, that's how I feel. I feel like I just sat down with Eucola Katzentine at WKAT and started my first day, and I went to the First National Bank on Alton Road, and she said, do you feel rich now, Neil, for 215 bucks a week? That's how I feel. <laughs> Incredible. What was your first break? Listen to this, Larry. I went to work and knocked on doors and got a job at a small radio station in Miami Beach, Florida. I did everything. I was, uh, I was, uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, uh, did the board, I did jock, I did sports, I did news, I did everything. Cleaned up, cleaned up, cleaned up, I did everything. Is that true? Yeah, but when you play those tapes, yeah. obviously it's part of your stick and you have it repeated. Yeah. Why do you do that over and over? For emphasis. We want to make yeah, sure I mean, they... Why don't, why don't you do something new? Our audience is a little bit slow. We want to make sure they catch it the 40th or 50th time. Yeah, 15 years slow. Exactly. Try, so, try a top 10 list. Okay, top 10. That's good. I'll start ripping off David Letterman. That would be good. That's original. <laughs> hey, listen, there's a guy here that wants to talk to you. You're going to pee in your pants right there on the plane when you hear this voice. How are you, Larry? Larry. Again. I said, Larry, how are you? Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> How soon they forget. Who is that? Your hockey friend. You? Grimma. Right. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Grim Rimma. Grimma, what are you doing in that studio? I came to see my good friend Neil Rogers. You're the guy he likes. <laughs> <laughs> and not all that much either, Larry. Don't get carried away. Well, I knew he liked someone. He likes you, Rimma. Hey, can't beat it. Join it. We scored in the last minute and tied you, Emma. I know. I thought you'd be here last night. Oh, yeah, now, he, now, he's a, now he's a Capitals fan. You know now he's a Capitals do? fan. We. All of a sudden, we. They got lucky and got a point. Now it's we. Nice going, Larry. I'm honorary captain of the Caps. Rimmer will tell you. Yeah, he is honorary captain. Yeah, yeah you and that Craig Berube, you make a good pair. 
I'm going to come down in two weeks for spring training, and I'm coming to the Rogers studio. All right. I'll you're, pick you that, up and bring that's you. That's a deal. I'm, I'm inviting you right now. Anytime you you're in it. town, you I'm come coming, in here. I'm coming. You ring or Cheryl will call me. I'll call her. I'll be there. We'll feed you. We'll get the, from the Villa Deli on, on uh, Walton Road on the beach. We'll bring you the best deli you've had since that uh, crazy place you keep plugging on the air. And uh, it'll be a real, it'll be a picnic. Happy anniversary, Neil. Thanks, Larry. Okay, baby. Bye, okay. Jeff. Don't drop, bye bye. Don't drop Pat too hard. There he goes. Can you can you believe that? Very unusual. That, that is the most very um, yeah. That is the most Impressive. bizarre phone call in 20 years. Seriously, it took me 20 years. What is it that he said? What did he <laughs> say? Nothing. He was even kissing my ass. He never yeah. says anything. He, he was said even you're kissing great. my ass. He said you were the only good one after saying you were yeah. the host of the radio. <laughs> and oh. now he's going to come do a show with you. That is he even just. Tried to insult Phil. The worst talk radio I've ever heard in my life was on WOD. Yeah. 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 He said I was the worst talk show host in America. I read it in the paper. The worst. I read it. Quote. There were quotes around in fact, the... we uh, have the tape. We Phil played it only 600 times again <laughs> yesterday. We got the tape. The worst talk show he's ever heard is the Neil Rogers show. You can't play that tape too many times. And the worst line I've ever heard was... Loan me $50. Right. <laughs> Won't that be great the day he Incredible. comes out? i got to do a break, by the way, because uh, we're only here to get the spots in, okay? We got uh, distracted with Larry. You know? It was it was well worth it at twice yeah. the price. By the way, what is this? This is a bag of uh, Neil Rogers twenty years. Yeah, I got a button. Blue button. Yeah, it's got from your picture on it. From New Age Design Graphics. Got my yeah. puss on the cover. That's a beautiful thing. Three one ninety six. Great. Thank you guys. Whoever that is. There's Boca Brian is in there. Look at that guy. Look at that shrimpy guy in there. And uh, guitar. Adam. Hey, I'll get to you. Just relax, okay? I didn't even recognize you with that schmutzy outfit you got on. Go buy some clothing, will you? So anyway, it's 1127 at WYOD. Let me... News, talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD. By the time I get through the next couple of minutes, she is going to have to pick every scab off that putrid, pus-filled body of hers, all right? Nobody rips you better. So I'm going crazy on this, yes, because this has got to stop. You make me sick, Pat, you bitch! God! How is it possible to be so stupid, Pat? Nobody rips you, and that's as good as Neil. You idiot, you asshole, you. Baby, he's the best. Well, sing this, you fat slob. I'm going to take this cord, and I'm going to shove it right up his ass, okay? And I'm going to shove this thing so far up his butt that he's going to be singing a different tune when I get through with him. Don't we have a longer cord than this piece of crap? Look at this. Look how short this damn thing is. We've got a hundred assholes running around this building. They can find another one besides him, although maybe not that big. Go so get it out of there. Go pull a cord somewhere. Go do something. Pull what? In your case, a good question, okay? God. Nobody rips your bed. Don't start looking once again, as always, to blame fat old Neil for whatever you're upset about. You disgusting, nauseating old slobs. Nobody rips you and acts as good as me. Old, crabby old bitches. Neil, if you don't repent, you're going to split hell wide open. You're, you're, yeah, I'm going to split it wide open. You know, I'm going to split it wide open your with skull a with a mallet, you stupid old eat. bitch. Ah! There we go. Now we're cooking. <laughs> what did I just get through talking about? It was old bags. We don't want you, lady, okay? Go get some knitting out. Go find some crossword puzzles to do. Go get uh, something. Okay, thanks, Anna Maria. There she is, a little long. Guitar Man is here, Boca Brian. Guitar Man's actually got his guitar. Just keep eating first, though, for a All second right, or two. Right. Who is this? This couldn't be Gregory Benjamin Budell, could it? Hi, this is Asshole, and I listen to Sonny Fox so I can hear the word Deal Rogers once in a oh, while. Oh, all right. <laughs> How you doing, Greg? I'm doing great. Well, now, what's, uh, now, here's the guy who can straighten out all these stories if he's permitted to speak. What's the uh, deal? Uh, Gary's coming to our station. Gary? Gary Goose? Gary, yes. Yeah. And that's the uh, prevailing rumor. Uh, rumor and uh, That's the prevailing rumor? I met him, by the way. I was one of the MCs for the Panthers preseason banquet in Boca. Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah, he is a nice guy, Rimmer, and he said to me, you know, that Budell, he's the biggest asshole I ever met. <laughs> no, he didn't, he didn't say that. He said, next to these, Denise Potvin, he's the biggest asshole. <laughs> so you're going to uh, OVV? Uh, well, it's now WCLB. Well, whatever it is, makes but no difference. Those, those nose pickers, they don't know from call letters. For the meantime, I'm going to be the prime time of uh, Fairbanks Communications. I'm going to do uh, JNL and uh, the country station. And I'm going to work with Gary. What, what do you mean by that? Uh, I'll be on JNO in the morning in the uh, country station uh, midday. So Boy Gary's not doing a show? 
Yes, he is. He will be uh, working the morning show. You just got through saying you're doing a morning show on JNO. Are you being like a little bit evasive here? No, no. Uh, you're doing a morning show with Boy Gary? For a while. Yeah. And then uh, I'm going to be doing some other stuff. He's going to become the co-host. The co-host with whom? Uh, Jim Edwards. <laughs> is Skyler still there? <laughs> yeah, why don't you just take Jim Edwards out and shoot him? There you go. <laughs> yeah, Skyler said he's got a present for uh, Jim Edwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this sounds very bizarre, but of course... Let's no one... how Greg's arguing now. Yeah. By the way, uh, this is my first anniversary with JNO today, and, and March 1st is 17 years uh, uh, since my first show in South Florida. Yeah. yeah. Well, guess what, Greg? I don't want to sound insensitive, but nobody cares. <laughs> you didn't get no call from Larry King, Greg. No, I didn't. Did, did you hear that? Yes, I did. What What do you make of that? It's what, what shocking. Is, I... I for the first time in 20 years, I will confess, I'm totally speechless. I don't know whether to scream or eat Chiquita Banana. I don't, I, know what, it, I don't know what to say. I thought it was a fake. I really I, mean, I, I thought it was going to be Phil doing Larry King's voice, you know? And it, it was. It, there's no fooling with Larry King. I mean, you hear that voice, there is no question about it. Do you know what I'm saying? No doubt in my mind. Yeah. And, of course, who else would be pompous enough to be calling from a plane on the way to L.A.? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so what should I expect from Gary Bruce? The uh, major the asshole. <laughs> no, not not the worst. Yeah, Close well, to the I've worst. Got to understand, if you I've want the worst, for... we'll introduce you to Steve Nickel, okay? Hey, listen, I've already worked. We'll through... introduce you to Steve Nickel if we can get him off the floor I long enough to stand up. And, there you go. Let's have a drink. He's I... selling. You know something? He's locked inside his office right now, celebrating my 20th anniversary by himself. <laughs> he's hey, having a he's having a little Henry Barrow party. You got to understand. <laughs> I've already worked for David Ross and Steve Kane. Can yeah. anybody be worse than that? Yes. <laughs> I don't believe that. How'd you like all the nice things Steve-O said about me in a paper the other day? How'd you like that? Except uh, for a minor, couple of minor character flaws. I'm sorry I can't be perfect like you are, Steve, but I'm working on it, okay? I'm working to correct those minor flaws. Well, listen, I, I got one request today. Yeah? Would you play that little piece of him going uh, with that, that uh, where he's stammering away? Because I, I love that. I, 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 just, 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 just tell me. Just to tell me. You don't mean uh, Mr. Ego, do you? Yeah. Now, wouldn't I see? Isn't it interesting? Raniere called in, and Henry and the whole gang from Waxy. How come we haven't had a call from anybody? Over? Oh, that's because it's probably Paxson. Because I know that Steve would be just dying to call in over here. Just tell me. Just tell me what your problem is. Hey, listen. You know? Even Norman became a Christian for him. Now, is Noodles? Right. Yeah, right. Sure. Is Noodles going to be on his show with you too, or is? And, no, this is a uh, uh, just a. Uh, just a thing. <laughs> it sounds like games. Hey, it sounds, it sounds really. It sounds evasive to me, is what it is. Me evasive. Yeah. Um, and when you say, "What should you expect from Boy Gary?" Does that mean you really haven't uh, had the opportunity? Is is he there yet? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, I heard a story that one reason that it was taking him a while to get down was that there were no hotel rooms available in town to, to put him up in. Yeah. And that was delaying it. Or maybe there were none that would accept him. <laughs> which sounds more likely to me. Well, I don't want you to go away. Will you hang on for a minute? Yes. Because I want you to speak. Your old friend has gone to take a leak or something or something even more serious. But I definitely want you to speak to you-know-who. And who would that be? <laughs> Does that explain it to you? <laughs> hang on a second. Don't go away. All right. Please. Okay, he'll... No, where is he? Is he a, taking a... He's taking a something. Okay, probably a big one. Okay, let's... Uh, oh, Mark Jacobson. Here's another superstar. Uh, how you doing that, Neil? Great. Boy, that new spot you guys got, that one really blows, Mark. <laughs> well, wonder, thank although, you very much. Although I do like it at the end where you got that thing screwed in through Don Cox's body. That's kind of good. That is kind of good. I, I thought you'd like to be part of that commercial. It's a good thing you lost some of the weight. You'd never gotten it all the way through them. You're right about that. Hey, let me tell you something. Your mother was probably wrong. You do have a career in this radio stuff, you know? Yeah, she's she's uh, full of it. You know, she was she's just dead a wrong. professional catch, and she ought to enjoy that car I bought her at Kendall Toyota too. By the way, that's right. And, yep. Uh, I understand she is enjoying it, right? She loves it. Yeah. She's got, like, one of those little old Yenta bows on the antenna, too, so uh, look out. <laughs> is that, you know what I'm talking about. This is quite a career you got going here. I mean, I'm listening to this on the radio, you know, on the, on the telephone when yeah. you get on. You caught me in the middle. But it did catch my interest, Neil. The pus on the girl? I don't know. You, something about the pus on the girl. I don't know. Pat I, or something. I don't, I don't, don't think like it was pus. It may have been similar, but I don't think similar? it was pus. Well, you know, whether you like it or not, Neil... I'm going to call you every 20 years, and I'm just Great. going to hound you to death. Outstanding. And, uh, and where's... Uh, you see who's in the other room? I'm sorry. Do you see who's in the other room? Do you see that? Hey, you're speechless. I understand. Yeah. yeah. I have somebody else who would like to say hello to you. Okay. He's a very good friend of yours, and uh, he's the former Fat Don Cox. 
He's now Thin Donnie. Really? Yeah, so uh, yeah. I'm going to put him tell, on the Tell him he better quit taking those pills, because every time, every time he stands up, they keep falling out. <laughs> Again, my best. And we are looking forward to having you on Miami tonight, because every time we have you, everybody goes crazy. That's why I'm screening my calls now. By the way, thank you for the help, and thanks for making us number one here, and I'm glad you're number one. Thanks, Mark. Hey, here's Don. Okay. Hold on. Here's number one. Anybody half. that can put up with 20 years in this town on the radio, yeah, has got to be a you know some kind of trophy. Has got to either be brilliant or stu very stupid. One or the well, other. Well, you know, we've both been called both. <laughs> yeah, you've been called a few things, Cox. Yeah, well, most of them were true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Most of which I can't say on the air. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, Cox. The, the caustic tongue. Cox, how you doing? Who's that? That's the bird. Oh, hey, bird. How you doing? I'm Good. doing fine. Uh, so he drug you out for the 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we we drugged him. Yeah, well, I knew Bird. Oh, I shouldn't have said that to you, to should I, Don? It was bad. It was just a bad play on words. Be we careful. drugged him. That was bad. Yeah, I was just, yeah, I'm just right. kidding, Don. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I knew he couldn't resist the opportunity to be back on the radio with you at any moment. I don't think he's leaving. I think he's going to stick around for next week. Oh, don't say that. Goodness. You're going to get people riled up in this building. Now, be careful. <laughs> He brought a sign that says, we'll, we'll cackle for food. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's done that before. Yeah, he has. Very successfully, too. <laughs> Neil, seriously, happy 20th. Thanks, Don. You deserve all the adulation. Okay. All right, see And ya. don't st stand up too fast on that diet. I won't. Okay. You don't have any of those uh, cock suckers laying around there, do you, We have Don? an open line in day. <laughs> so here he is. I'm back with Budel now. I would, I would oh, hi, Greg. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Try to control yourself just a little bit. Uh, who is this, Glenn? Yeah. Hey. Oh. It just felt like a prick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shall we share some Irene Richards memories? She's in the building, Greg. No. As we speak, I, uh, uh, Neil is speechless. I got to go now. <laughs> Yeah, that's why Glenn was downstairs. It had that effect on all of us. <laughs> it really is Irene Richards. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, what, a, what a day. Incredible. And then I heard a rumor that you're going to do country, Greg? That's correct. Man, uh, is this a day or what? <laughs> it really is. Well, thanks for hanging on for that great conversation with the bird. Was it compelling and scintillating? <laughs> Hopefully your material in the morning will be a lot better than that. Oh, man. Okay. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> See ya. Bye. I appreciate that. I got, there's a, like all this party going on out in the hall. You Is know? there? There's, yeah. Yeah, Woody looks like he had a head start on it too. Nice oh, outfit definitely. there, Woody. Definitely. So anyway, it's 19 till noon at WIOD. 610 WIOD News is watching South Florida. We're watching the White House and Congress. We're poised for what happens next. The best news. News, talk, and entertainment radio. <laughs> 610 WIOD. Boy, he sure hasn't lost it, has he? <laughs> you ought to see the squeeze he just put on Irene here. Man, oh, oh man. Come on. It's a miracle you can still breathe. Take some oxygen, some helium from one of those balloons before you pass Knock out. Knock it off. Boy, did you put the squeeze on her, <laughs> huh? Even Larry King never put the squeeze on anybody like that. So Woody Graber is here. What do you got for me, Woody? Hopefully something really good. Oh, uh, really, really good, really good. Uh, yeah. Uh, if, I, if I might uh, take some time. Uh, on behalf of my client, Martin Air Holland, the other Dutch airline that flies seven days a week out of Miami International Airport, direct to Amsterdam, we'd like to congratulate you on your 20th anniversary in the South Florida radio market. You've consistently provided your listeners with a quality format that is reflected in your longevity and popularity. In honor of this accomplishment and in gratitude for all you have done over the years to encourage tourism to Amsterdam and Holland, <laughs> Martin Air is proud to present you with... Encourage tourism where? To Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Martin Air. Come on, Woody, keep reading. Oh, Martin Air Holland is proud <laughs> is proud to present you with two star class tickets round trip to Amsterdam oh. to be used at your agreed upon date. And additionally, while you are in Holland, we'd be pleased to introduce you to Dutch Radio. We are sure they have never heard anything like you before oh! yeah. or probably ever will again. When do I start? Um, whenever you uh, can great? sign the contract. Because they actually speak at English up there. Yes, oh, they do. you'd fit right in. Thank you, Woody. You thank you so much. That's a beautiful thing. Don't okay? you think I'm very you'd... happy to do that. Don't you think you'd fit right in? I would fit right in, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd be real happy. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds CD good. and Weedy, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Now, who we got on there now? Uh-oh. Oh, my God. Now, you're going to be impressed by oh, this. Oh, boy. Hello. Hey there. How are you? Great, Gary. And a uh, happy 20th to you. Thank you so much. And... The... I hope that you still have some of those old suits for me because I knew that's how we worked well together. Exactly. 
Well, I always dressed for success. You did, you did. Yeah. Listen, and I have a lot of those successful dresses still in my closet. Yeah, well, bring them out. <laughs> bring them out. You look dashing in them. You're, don't you know who this is? I can't. I can't place the voice. Gary. Oh, you can't place. It. Who's that? The bird. The yeah. bird. Hey, listen, bird. Come I helped make your entire career. You did. It's don't you remember um, Gary Lawrence? On Zeta, we used to report when he used to drive in late in the morning, of right there course. in the window. Gary, it's been Which so is just long. Before you got blown out. And I haven't heard too. your voice in so long. I couldn't place well, it. Well, that's right. All right, I, I'm it, sort of happy about that. Not really, Bert. How you listen? You guys, seem <laughs> like Gary, a good time. <laughs> you take a shot at me. Well, listen. Look at all the shots. Like Neil said, you guys took at me for all those years. Oh, it was all in fun. I absolutely right. So. Neil, it's 20 Wasn't years. Wasn't it? Yeah. And I want to I know. Think. Go ahead. <laughs> of I, the I, passage I like of to time. all of my ex-employees, everybody we used to work with together keeps calling you up. Are they all working now? Good question. What was that? All his ex-employees. Well, I mean, I heard Cox. I heard Udell. Well, I that's mean, right. That's right. They were all uh, under your thumb. <laughs> now, listen, I want to uh, congratulate you on a great job your traffic people are doing. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> on I'm all the other, plane, on all the other stations right now, that have like a brain. Larry. Huh? I'm in a plane like now, like Larry. Yeah. So I'm flying over. You know, I want to make sure that you got you got all the traffic. Well, our all. traffic guy's not in a plane. He's in a broom closet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, he, and he's taking diction lessons as we speak. I know that. Or yeah. something to do with Dick. And so to speak. Right. All right. So Thanks, Gary. It's fun. great hearing from you. And, and of it's course, a pleasure uh, talking to you. And you have another good 20 years. And you owe us points for making your traffic look so good now. Thanks a lot. See you, Gary. Bye. 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 See, right. he, he has the uh, Skywatch yeah. Metro, whatever yeah. that traffic thing was we had, and we just yeah. blew it off and put these uh, people, these bozos on. Now, Maribel's not a bozo. She just can't speak any glaze. But the other guy's a real bozo. I am, in, I am impressed at that call. Uh, very impressed. Which one? Gary Lawrence? Yeah. Larry King? Oh, well, How that about Greg call... Budell? Were you impressed by that call? Man. Randy. Now, Irene is making gagging. She's got her finger down her throat to her, to her uh, aspiratus. That I could never He's like an albatross yeah. around your neck. That's what Stanley Dancer used to say. Yeah. Again and again. And again. Yeah. <laughs> you just, it, it is true. Greg is like a bad penny. He just when you think he's gone forever, he just keeps showing up again. Yeah, There's just something true. about it. When it's you think you true. finally have ridded your, don't take it personal, Greg, unless you want to. I think he is over that phase though. That bit about do they like me? Do they hate me? I was on a golf course this morning and there were 17 guys all playing, and I kept wondering do they hate me? I think he's over that. Now. Are you sure? No. no. <laughs> and just wait till boy Gary gets in over there. Oh, you talk about paranoia running deep. Oh, man. Mm -mm, heavy oh, duty. man. Wait till boy Gary comes up to you, Greg, and says, by the way, don't worry about that uh, about that picture you were going to take for the uh, yearbook here, or the uh, scrapbook, <laughs> because you won't be here anyway by the time it comes out. <laughs> don't worry about any publicity shots, because you don't need anybody, because you won't be on here. That kind of stuff, you know, to build your confidence. Just ask Randy about that, the goddess. She'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's 11 till noon at WYOD for... Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Okay, they said Steve couldn't make it because he was busy talking to old people, <laughs> which is nothing new for him. But Norm Kent, now where the hell did Norma go? I mean, Norm go. And uh, Craig Worthing is here. Now, you do realize, by the way, they should be having a thing. We're giving them a slide of a thing over there and a microphone, too. You've been on here in this market longer than I have. Yeah, but I, you talk about old people. I'm the one who's labeled with old people, not Steve. You know? Yeah. Your ego must I've have seen, shot got, up even more after Larry you, King's call. That was a great you've call. you've got some old people. I've seen his numbers, and he, he, may, <laughs> he may be talking to old people, but a very select group of them, I'll tell you that, small group. But he said good things about you in the did. newspaper. He and really I said did. good things about him. And that's I, it's true. true. I do respect the fact that he's taken like a uh, non-existent facility there, and yep. he's grinding out a living and doing a lot of trade-outs and got the baseball cards, and, uh, <laughs> and he's manipulated Alice. He's doing great. The rest of us, man. Eh, yeah, but he's doing great. Well, you ought to be on during the daytime, but I don't want to. No, start no, I night. belong. I like nights. You I really do. Night with all. The, how do you manage with no signal to get bigger numbers than they have during the rest of the day, though, Craig? <laughs> well, See, well I'm just lucky. Nervous I'm laugh. really lucky. No, I really. Yeah, you're um, lucky that you got all those uh, very loyal old farts. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's, that's all right. What it's I don't all about. mind. Those old farts have kept me in this market for I remember, 23 years. I remember the day. And it was sad too, because I had left. We worked together for two years at KT. Two great years. We had a tremendous time. And I left and went to WNWS. And I was listening to you one day when we just started over there on Flagler Street. Right. And I'm pulling up in front of the station, and you're going on in the air about old people. 
<laughs> What's wrong with talking to old people for quite a lot? Old people are the cream of the earth. They're the cream of the crop. What's wrong with talking to old We're all going to get old friends. What's wrong with talking to old people? And you were uh, ranting and raving, and you were so upset because evidently somebody on our, maybe I did it, maybe who knows, about KAT was strictly the Alta Cocker station, and it was nothing but a bunch of old you. people. Had to be and you were just foaming, and you went on and on and on. It was great. I'll, as long as I live, I'll never forget that. But I had five great years at, uh, at uh, KAT. I really did. And I remember when you How first came you, in. So you were there... But, yeah, you were there after. But how long were you there before I came? In I got there in uh, the first, uh, March of 75, I guess. And uh, I got so fired after year. the new people came in. I lasted a year after the new people came in. Yeah. But I remember when you came in. And oh, by the time... way, Norm, you'll have to stay outside. This is for broadcasters only. <laughs> <laughs> Carvel. Carvel, happy 20th. Thank you, Carvel. Thank you profusely. We love Carvel. We love Tom Carvel and all the uh, Jewish owners. <laughs> Thanks you were much. you were making two hundred and fifteen dollars, I to think, start. when you first came right. in, and I was making four hundred, and I was so proud of that fact. And here you are today. I think you're up there with some of the sports stars in your figures, yeah, and right. I'm still making the same amount of money. Yeah. That's why I'm down here to maybe mooch a couple yeah, of bucks. Yeah, but you live frugally, and we got some free food here, today, <laughs> So what the hell's wrong with that? That's, I'm the one. I'm on a diet, though. Food. So I have to. You've done well. You look great. I was thinking the other day about the, one day you were doing a spot about arching legs. It was, it was spot was supposed. You remember that? <laughs> Do I have a memory or what? The spot was for some geriatric sponsor, and I'm in the studio. Craig is on here, and he's doing a spot, one of these geriatric things, for some quack product for people with aching legs. And he says, friends, if you have arching legs, and at that point, we had... We had a, a big window <laughs> with these big drapes. Remember with drapes on it? And I was holding the drapes. I was laughing so hard I had to hold myself up from falling on the floor. And here's this poor man trying to finish the spot on the air. And just as red in the face as you are now, that's how red you were. The tears were rolling down your cheeks. It was great. You know, for 215 bucks a week, it was at least a good time, you know? Yeah. No, uh, by the way, my daughter's in radio up in Albany, New York, and I was talking with her last night, and uh, both my kids always loved you, but my daughter wanted to send along her congratulations well, as well you. to you. That's great. You've got two uh, great kids. I told her, just stay off the air, although you proved the opposite. With what? Uh, being on the air. I'm one of those people that tell people who want to go into radio, don't be a talent. I always tell them that. Do anything but be right. a talent. But again, there are people like you and uh, the Howard Stearns of the world and the Larry Kings who proved just the opposite. The Larry you know. Kings. That was a great call, by the way, though. What, what do you make of it? What, what do you say? I don't have a bone spot. <laughs> yeah, well, what, what do you say after hearing that call? Listen, I mean, I is, is the guy an acid or, and, and I, you know something? And he will, when he's down here, his ego is big enough, he will come in here. Oh, yes. Well, he's, you know, I only met him once and it was right here. I know uh, how to do a talk show. <laughs> yeah. I used Long to have a guy. Hours. Yeah. Tell, tell me when I'm interrupting. Me so horny. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Are you done, Larry? No. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I used to have a guy named Brother Ted Weitzel. Do you remember him? He was a faith sure. healer. Sure. Absolutely. On. Another one of your quack guys. <laughs> oh, here. Come on in, JC. Do you remember the movie The Boys in a Band? Yes. And they gave uh, Harold his birthday present. Here, JC, is my anniversary present. I'm taking him home. He doesn't know it yet. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Does he look like Brad Pitt or what? No. Okay. Yeah, you do. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. So sure, his, take his you producer want. called me up and Stick said... Stick around during the news, J.C. ...said that King wanted him on as a guest and yeah. be over here at quarter to 12. He was yeah. at midnight then. But and I, I had my guest that. over here at quarter to 12. Yeah. And uh, he came out and said he knew nothing about it and didn't want me, and he acted towards me like uh, I was dung under his feet. That was uh -huh. my one meeting with him. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds like, like Larry. You, Larry. Yeah. I think, Larry, I think that Craig should get an apology for that. I will not give it to you. Okay. <laughs> same, same old hard ass. But he ca he calls on the phone. This is now. Are you familiar with the call that uh, Phil Henry did? Phil made Larry look like an even bigger ass than the f bigger than ever he has in his life. Okay, even than naturally, with that phone call with uh, doing Bob Green's voice and crying on the ear. This is like three or four weeks ago, and Phil's been playing the tape. It's like legendary from coast to coast. And on this tape, Larry says, Neil Rogers is the worst talk show host I ever heard in my life. Okay? Right. Very emphatically. And he right. goes on and on about, in fact, uh, where the hell is, what did I do with that thing? We got it on tape all over the place. Where he's Anybody saying, could do a Neil Rogers kind of show and say dirty words. That kind of broadcasting has appealed to a certain element that I do not desire to appeal to. What word did you say? Asshole. <laughs> so... So, and now he calls and kisses my ass, which goes to show you that there hasn't, uh, there's not an ass that's been invented that Larry won't the tongue. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but I think that he might uh, now, not... What, what are you laughing about, Norm? I heard the same about you, too, by the way. Here, Norm, anyway, get over here. Norm, stop following J.C. around, will you please? And look at who's here! 
Oh, my God. Now, you notice the timing of this? Great minds work alike. My 20th anniversary and the day before, Sonny opens up the market, reopens the market. After all this travail and this trauma that this man has survived, if, when you leave here, if you want to pick up some great fruit, stop at the Sonny's. Yeah. The best fruits in town are at Sonny's. So are you, are you officially reopened now or what? Yes, sir. Officially. Look at that. The hair is the same. The red complexion is the yeah, same. I can't afford a haircut now. Though. Huh? You, maybe that's right. We'll get Miriam in here. We'll get a trade out. He can bring in a few uh, bananas, and Miriam can uh, do a little haircut or something. Very good. Incredible. Okay, we're going to do the news, and we're going to do something. Man, this is just beyond belief. I'm still recovering from the Larry King call. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think... I love the, your comment you made after immediately following the call. What did he say? Yeah, I said, hey, Larry. What word did you say? Right. Yeah. It summed it up. And Perfect. I still can't finger it out. Yeah, I can't. Man, oh man I'm going to have to go to a doctor to get his tongue uh, separated from my <laughs> ass at this point. Okay, we'll come back and uh, eat some more food. The home of Neil Rogers. What more can we say? WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. News, talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD. Ay, Dios mío, esos carros. Okay, so anyway, 12.05 at WIOD. Who we got on the um, band line? Oh, look at that. Uh-oh. Who could this be? Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, Neil. Bill Tanner. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. God, Here's your old, you. your old bird brand. Your old friend is uh, here. Hey, Tanner. <laughs> Who's that? It's the bird. Oh, hi, man. Hey. How are you? Hey, Bill, I saw you on uh, network TV some time ago. Was I in chains? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Were you on, was it Mike and Maddie? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw you. Yeah, that was, a, that was a fun thing. Yeah. So here we are in Los Angeles. How's Miami? Are you in L.A. still? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep, still in L.A. I go back and forth, uh, you know, spend some time in Miami, but... Uh, you spend some time in Miami? Well, yeah. Unfortunate choice of words. And know. and Maddie used to work with you on the uh, old morning show, right? Yeah, she did. At Power? Yeah, and she was uh, doing this uh, TV show, and they called me up and asked me if I could come down. They played a, a surprise thing on her. She didn't know I was going to be oh. on. So it was fun. Yeah, and it's amazing. You know, Irene Richard is here. In the, Irene! It's, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. Why Irene? Well, this is like the history of radio. Yeah. And we had, B we had Budell on the phone a little while ago, and Irene is still puking her guts out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're cleaning up the mess. It's and, a... and and we're going to sing Tanner in the morning. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to pick on Greg, but at least Tanner was one of those guys. Remember, we used to call up uh, all the other shows in the morning on Zeta. We called up uh, Tanner. We called up Sonny Fox. Right. We even called up that hard ass Joey, and we used to have some. And then we called up Budell. And he threatened to sue us for disrupting his show. Remember that? <laughs> and I said, how do you disrupt that, number one? And number two, you call that a show? <laughs> but uh, Greg, he's come a long way since then. He's up in Palm Beach uh, dazzling the troops up there. He's doing All it. right. Yeah. He's playing country. Is he really? Yeah. yeah. He's finding his level. It's a they shocking... all grew up to be cowboys. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's a shocking day, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> and so one, he... one day he may even ride side saddle. You never know. In the year. <laughs> Just a joke, Greg. Be nice. Okay. <laughs> so lots of people in the studio with you there, is that it? We got, we've had everybody's been in. Henry Barrow was in here with a bottle, and unfortunately... <laughs> and it, but, but the best part of it is, it wasn't a joke. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. It was like two-thirds empty, and uh, so was he at this point. Yes, I, th I thought he had water in He's it, He's driving know? home playing running on empty yeah, at this point. Yeah, I thought point. it was colored water, and it was a yeah, joke. Yeah. No. <laughs> Man, talk about a walking brewery. Oh, and look at that. He left a little for George in there, too. In fact, we're going to start a bonfire with that. Incredible. <laughs> You should and, be uh, here, Bill. It's amazing. You'd fit right in. Yeah, I'm sure I would. Yeah, you fit in with this crowd. Make no mistake about that. <laughs> and then I just had an incoherent call, the, the, most, oh. the most amazing call in 20 years. It's propitious it happened on this day. Larry King calling me. In fact, he's probably on his way to see you. He's on his way to L.A. to kiss somebody's ass out there. Boy, that's sure. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> he calls me. This is the same man who on the Phil Henry show a couple of weeks ago said, Neil Rogers is the worst talk show host I've ever heard in my life, which he says because I keep ripping him all the time and playing all these uh, bits like loan me $50. Yeah, I heard that. And and he calls here and kissed my ass. On, we, we could barely understand him. It sounded like Larry King in a blender. And it was him. It was really him. And he kissed my ass. I'm telling you, I'm black and blue. I'm uh, going to have to go get his tongue separated from the cheeks. Is he going to do, is he going to do an updated cut of loan me $50? Yeah. He, in fact, he kept saying, I can't understand any of that stuff you're playing in the background. Now. What, we got a bad connection. What is that? And I said, loan me $50. Yeah, and he uh, couldn't understand it. He says, why do you keep repeating that stuff over and over again? 
I said basically because you're an asshole. Larry. He said, yeah, you're the greatest. You're the greatest, Neil. He he just can't help himself. He's just a compulsive ass looker. I read the quote in the paper with quotes around yeah. it. Yeah, Neil Rogers. Oh, we is have the, it on tape. The worst talk show host. The worst talk show host he's ever that heard there in ever his life. Is. The worst in America today. It was in the paper yesterday. Yeah. Bill. Well, if that's the worst that it gets, we're in good shape. There you go. Well, Bill, it's great hearing from you. Yeah, it's good. I want to talk to you soon, Neil, and I'll be in Miami in a week, so I'll give you a call. Wait a second. What is it? Oh, Johnny Dark says hi. Oh, great. Tell him hi for me. Yeah. Can, can you believe it? Yeah. Keep he, the coast he's, looking. He's real impressed. He says he likes that music you're playing on the coast. <laughs> Not. Beautiful. Take care, Bill. Bye, Neil. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. How Johnny like Dark that? is coasting. Now, I get a fax here. I'll give you a clue who uh -oh. it's from. Okay, it's a great fax. Here's the clue. Rectum. How do you like that? <laughs> Where How do you is like he? that? Where is he? <laughs> oh, and it's also signed. It's not only from Mitch Lewis. He's on uh, Zeta. Oh, is he? Yeah. You know, I saw... He's on Zeta, you mean? On the... He's in it. In, in Zeta. Or up his ass. You yeah. know, I, I saw an ad for Zeta on the uh, TV last night, and Paul Castanova is on morning. He also signed this, which... <laughs> At that point, that oh, and by the way, I had an earlier fax that said they must listen to your show on Zeta, the morning guys, because this morning they had on. Wait till you hear this, George. They had on Vinny from Blossom. Uh, yeah, exactly. They had on David Lasher, who plays Vinny on Blossom. Mm -hmm. Now that's all I requested for my twentieth anniversary. Oh. I don't. He hasn't shown up yet, so oh. I guess JC will have to be the stand-in. You're not the, you're not into uh, sit -in. you're not into the Lawrence brothers. No, I'm not. How come? I find Joey Lawrence to be very annoying and aggravating and uh, very New York. You know what I'm saying? Well, Just, I uh, thought that was beside the point. No, it's not. It, that is the point in his <laughs> oh. case. <laughs> All right. I just okay. want to be clear on this. I'm still uh, losing it over Larry King. All right, let's do a little uh, piece of business. Now, are you going to sing? Well, I'll get, we'll get the rest of the guys together. Where'd they go? Okay, let me do yeah. the break, and then you come back. Guitar Man brought his guitar. You're also in on this? Yeah. Oh, we're all Whatever on. your name is, Scott. We're, we're the traveling wannabes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah in, in your case, there's no question about that. Is, Bo, is Brian in on that one, too, or yeah, what? Anna. Oh, this is going to be a production. And Anna Maria as oh, well. Oh, really? What a production that's going to be. Wow. Look what at Norm day. running around looking for the free food. <laughs> anyway, it's 11 past noon. I bet you they don't feed you like this over on a light bulb, even with those cheesy trade-out restaurants you guys have got. I know what that's all about. Anyway, uh, that's a bad comment. I shouldn't say that, should I? They got some great places over there, right? They got the 14 best. Steve has got the 14 best Italian restaurants in town. It's just a joke, Steve. And just quit smacking your lips when you do that spot. You sound like a pansy, okay, Steve? Cut it out. <laughs> You can get the Italian pasta for 69 cents or the Italian olive oil for 16.99. Plus, your choice, the New York strip steak or the salmon steak for 4.99 or something brown on your plate for $1.50. Bill Hendry, 2 to 6 p.m. on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. What is that? Oh, that's like real silverware. Look yeah. at that. Well, we got to sell it. Before you do your song, look who we got here. We'll see. CBC Sports, home of the champions. Doug! How you doing? 
one. Great. Doug McClain, the coach of the Great Panthers, who said we only got a point last night. We'll take it anyway. Listen, happy anniversary. Thank you so much. It's amazing. Don Shula, 27 years. Neil Rogers, 20. Right. Doug McClain, six months. And I understand Wayne Huizinga is writing me out the same check he wrote to the uh, brainstem. That ought to be great. <laughs> Listen, uh, you're said, no J.P. McCarthy, but I still like you. I'm no Dick Purton either. <laughs> but, hey, listen, you know, there's always at least one Dick in every market. You know hey, what I'm saying, Doug? But, listen, is there any chance any tickets? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you guys keep playing like last night. You're going to have a lot of tickets. You know what I'm saying? So I knew you'd jump off the bandwagon as soon as I had I'm not off Rimmer. the bandwagon. I, listen, I came Rogers. on the air yesterday. I was pleading. I was begging. I said, we got tickets left for this game. I was there last night. Tears were rolling down my cheeks looking in that upper deck seeing those empty seats. You know is something? Way, is there any way, since you're such a knowledgeable hockey guy, that you could slide down between periods the odd time and just give me the odd tip? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen the odd tip or two in my time. No question about that. <laughs> You're tough. Yeah, l l last night, you know, I mean, you made the right move. You put the Beezer in there, and, of course, right away, as soon as you let that first greasy goal in, everybody said, gee, we knew he should have started Fitzy, you know. <laughs> These guys are the biggest bunch of second-guessing fools I've ever seen in my life. Here's a guy who's been in the league, like he says, six months. He's got a team that's got 78 points that's right on the ass of the Rangers, still ahead of those overpaid Flyers. And all what about say, tied with the Pittsburgh Penguins? Tied with those Pittsburgh Penguins Second with Lemieux and Yager and Francis and all of those going over there and uh, all they want to know is how come he started this one and uh, these people as you're finding out real fast Doug they're not easy to please it only took me 20 years to find that out no but I'll tell you it's really fun I really enjoy it down here and it's a pleasure but I'll tell you I'm lucky to have you as a big booster because uh, oh boy this, that really I thought the suction was bad from Larry King before Doug <laughs> didn't we win last night I beg your I pardon hey listen I said to Rimmer I'd phone in as long as we didn't lose yeah <laughs> but well, anyway I'm really happy for you. You know, Rimmer uh, said, you know, a tie is like kissing Denise Potvin. That's what he said. <laughs> and I can't think of too many things more disgusting than that. So how's the anniversary party going? It's great. It's dynamite. Larry King called in before, and we're trying to separate his tongue from my buttocks as we speak now. It's uh, it's unbelievable. We got food here like you've never seen. Don Cherry called in this morning. You missed that, I'll bet. You're kidding. Well, I, I had to go on the ice. But listen, I, I straightened his ass. everybody to Boston Chicken the same as when I was down there. No, we got better than that. Unbelievable. Not that meal. we don't like Boston chicken. We got even better than that. And uh, by the way, we, our guest today didn't stop on the way to pick up uh, seafood either, or to pick up your car either on Federal Highway. You know, next time you come on an important show, Doug, you show up on time. You don't come right in here in the middle of an hour. You know what I'm saying, Dougie? We, I know, and I, I'll tell you're you. are doing a great job. But it, tell was us, a life, it was a thrill of a lifetime to be on with you, Neil. There's no doubt about that. I'm sure I hope that. I get the honor That's to do it That's what Rimmer again. always says. The thrill of <laughs> a lifetime. Tell Rimmer to get lost. And I said, look, I said, reviewing your mediocre career, I would believe it. <laughs> He's the biggest pain. That guy he is. drives me crazy. I can't, listen, I can't even go home and wipe my uh, behind. I, that phone is, I walk in the door and the phone is ringing like frantically. I say, what the hell do you want? And it's him. Oh, no. It's him. Joe, get we'll this. get Lang here eventually. Yeah, we'll get some real announcers. We'll get Rick Jenner right down here if Buffalo ever come. <laughs> we'll get some real broadcasters down here. So I gave Cherry, I told him, uh, you know, cut the crap with all this baloney about the Leafs are squeezing the sticks too tight and all this. Uh, stop uh, covering up for the uh, ineptitude of my team, okay? Hey, you made a big trade, though, last night. Yeah, big deal. <laughs> we got rid of a couple of stiffs, and we got two more stiffs. And now, now when the Leafs lose to Pittsburgh, uh, uh, Mike Lang can say, Elvis has just left the building. <laughs> or Wayne Presley, what, one of the others, just left the building. <laughs> Well, listen, do a good job on the road trip, will you? Okay, but it's still, is there any chance of getting a couple tickets? Yeah, we got a couple We got a couple of plane tickets for you, one way, unless you win. Nobody you wanna, wants to talk to you. They just phone in for tickets. We, That's a joke. I can't believe you let people get away with that. Welcome to Miami, Doug. Now you're catching on. Now hey, you're listen. understanding what it's all about. Happy anniversary. Thanks a lot, Doug. Take care. Good bro. luck. Bye. Doug McClain, coach of the Panthers. Okay, and I see you guys had to wait for him, but it was worth waiting for him. He's a good guy okay. for a Canadian. So what are you guys uh, going to play? What is this? We got Anna Maria, we got Brian, we got Skyler, we got Guitar Man. Uh, uh, traveling, traveling pillbearers. Yeah, where is JC? Well, I need him the most. A little, a little off. Oh. That Steve Nichols drinks a lot. Man, that guy's a drunken sot. Drunk all the time and the mornings, too. Hey, Steve Nichols, what's wrong with you? Drinkle, 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 guzzle, 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 nickel, 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 pukel, 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 drinkle, 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 guzzle, guzzle, guzzle. Let's just go get drunk. Uh. Well, are you guys ready? Okay, Let's here we go. go. <laughs> Sally Fitz took the money and split Jazz McKay as his liver decays. Randy Rose with Gary's crap up her nose. That's, That's it. just great radio. great radio. Okay. See you at the end. Yeah. Larry King. When the Phil Henry thing Reynolds ran, now he's competing with Stan and Bo.
Jesus, when will he leave? That's just great radio. All the guests weren't the best, and they had in a prayer. Marvin Dunn, Alex Dowd, Madeline Murray O'Hare. Thank God they're all off the air. Though their egos deflating, just look at Neil's ring. I'm small. As we draw to a close, drop your bone. Oh! Just pick up the phone, talk to Neil. Hey, what all of us feel that Neil is a god, a big dripping one of just great rain. Neil Rogers, God. Beautiful. That was so emotional. Everybody in the building is moist. Unbelievable. That was great. Could they do that again? I think I screwed up the videotaping. <laughs> Did you? Oh, yeah. Make someone happy. Sally, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, guys. Oh, no. Oh, you you know something? As incredible as the Larry King call was, this one could be a close second. Hello? Uh, oh, I look. I figured if Larry King could get away with calling, so could I. Steve Patterson? Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh. You, can oh. Oh. you can blame Boca Brian for this call. You son of a bitch. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thanks a lot. I had to call and wish you a happy anniversary. Well, no gee, that was awfully nice. Me. And thanks for leaving us all of those stiff carts. I mean, all those carts that we could uh, bulk erase. If anybody ever bothered <laughs> to tell me I didn't work there anymore, I would have been happy to erase them and put yeah. them away. We're oh. too busy drinking over here. We don't have time to communicate with the uh, talent, well, so God to speak. Well, God bless you. Oh, in I your know, case. Yeah. What is it? Of course. Of yeah. course. God forbid I, I just come down and see a schedule with my name not on it, and that's the message You're I on get. this weekend, by the way. Pardon? I said, uh, <laughs> I said, I hope you have a great weekend. Yeah, me too. Right. <laughs> me too. Thanks a lot, Steve. Well, ha happy, happy, and uh, I hope you don't have to go through another 20 years. Uh, I pray. Okay. I'm praying every minute. Okay. Well, Thanks. congratulations. Okay. Bye. See ya. Get him out of here. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, Steve Patterson. You don't, Now, you were uh, out of here before we had Steve oh, Patterson. I don't know him. Uh, I assume production? No, no, he was a weekend guy. Oh, there you go. He was like in the same old, kind of like his uh, Chris Baker, Joey Reynolds, uh -huh. a, long, a long run of great winners that we've had on the weekends here. Yeah. In fact, my bowels are twitching now just uh, recounting all these great names. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting. There's a, um, a couple of talk radio stations I hear up there. They play music on the weekends. Yeah. You know, they play... Uh, oh, God, is that a good idea for us? You think about it. Oh, they, they man. They play, like, jazz. Or yeah. They play like, nice music. You think about it. You don't have to go through any of that uh, trying to find... But wouldn't that be a good talent. format for us? All jazz all weekend. See ya, buddy! Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. Hey, buddy! Well, it's such, a, it's such an interesting idea, and it, it works. You know, I swear, I hear them do it. I just had never thought about it when we were here... Uh, dealing with all that. And I say this, is Irene Richards still here who's getting ready to do a weekend show tomorrow? <laughs> I wasn't thinking of Irene. Is that a consultant now? Or what? Yeah, yeah. Right. he's consulting. Yeah. And quite frankly, at this point, it could only be an improvement. Okay, so anyway, it's 1225 at WIOD. Mm. We ought to take uh, some calls from some real people here in the next uh, hour or so because these people are going to get upset and cranky. Oh, but I've liked these... Uh the celebrities have been celebrity fascinating. Call yeah, celebrity especially callers. that one. That one. Yeah, you'll never forget it. I, I only wish we would have had a better phone, although that added to the ambiance yes. of the quality it of the phone. It was perfect. Line. No, but the there, connection was there's perfect. There's just something you just, you, you, seriously, I mean, a lot of the stuff is, is shtick, but in his case, stick, no. you go home and you look in the mirror and you ask yourself, is there no shame anywhere in this world? Is there no ass anywhere that this man won't lick? It's just, it's just amazing. It's astonishing. And to think that once upon a time, not in this room because this studio wasn't here, but somewhere in the bowels of this building, that man infested this place. Mm. And you know that Rimmer, who also is another guy that Larry says, just sit by the phone, you got a call coming, you're going to be working in D.C. You're going to have the biggest job in town, 100000 a month. Another one of those guys that's heard Larry's uh, tales of woe, which never come true. He's going to pick him up at the airport and bring him, and he will be sitting in this studio. Yes. And guess what? Is there anybody out there who... Where does the line form for, for people who would like to bring the food for Larry on that day? <laughs> remember, remember Godfather 3? I wouldn't be surprised if we have a bunch of cannolis here on that day, huh? Now, you told them Villa Deli is what you told them. Yeah. Yeah. You think that'll happen? Could be. But I wouldn't be surprised since that is over there on the beach. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few people over there on the beach. What's that guy that used to call all the time on QAM? What's the guy's name? 
Every time, that's all he would talk about is how Larry King of Auto Money used to call Bill Calder. He put Bill in his grave with one call too many. You know who I'm talking about. If, if the, this guy, that's all he talks about. He lives for the day. Oh, yes. Yes, I do remember. Yeah, that yeah. he can get a hold of Larry just one last time right. and uh, pay him back for all You're the only kindnesses. two that t still talk about it, you and this right. guy. Right, that's right. Yeah. I remember when it was what a is big it? deal. Hey, take a break, party boy. <laughs> hey, I'll take a break when I'm good and ready, okay? It's the goddamn Rick Riley show, okay? I'll break whenever the hell I'm ready, and we'll do the news whenever I'm ready, whenever I feel like it, okay? Okay. No other loan company is... I mean, how can you be on here for like 40 years like Rick Riley and do the news three minutes after the hour? You know what I'm saying, Rick? You're a good guy, but come on, start catching up with the format, will you please, you jackass, you phony baloney? Get with it. What do you expect from a guy that's got a weasel for a pet? Another Sunday night. Another amateur tries a new career. You know the line. Keep your day job. But listen Sunday nights at 11, for Neil won't like it. And if you dare, send your audition tape and step up to the microphone. 1401 North Bay Causeway, Miami 33141. Neil won't like it. Sunday nights at 11 on News Talk and Entertainment Radio. 610 WIOD. Stan Major, now on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. If you missed the last show, you missed this. Well, then what the hell is your problem? Kane is in New York, fella. When he would do a show, I don't want Kane back. I just told you that. But well, then who do you want? I think who do you want? You want Alan Burke? No, of course not. I think you want Joey Reynolds? No, of course not. Then what the hell do you want on the air? Is Silence? That, I mean, is that all we have to choose? What do you... From? Give me a name. But is that all we... Who have? do you want? Is that all we have what to choose? What kind of content... Do you want during 2 to 6? I do. Hear the next Stan Major show. This afternoon at 2 on News Talk Radio 610. WIOD. Unbelievable. And I couldn't get a contract. That was so great, and I couldn't get a contract. Stan. Hello, God. Tweety. How the hell? Where are you living now? Lakeland. Lakeland? Oh, yeah. God. You know where that is? Oh, God. What? No, I, I... Where do you want me to live? <laughs> <laughs> Where? What kind of content? And, and this is coming from a guy who was doing a show in Clearwater. How do you like that? Right. At the true. Nazi headquarters over there. That's true. Give me a name. What name? Where do you want me to live? <laughs> Joey yeah. Reynolds. Yeah. Right. Well, listen, let me play this one, too, just a second. I prefer Stan Major. I prefer Stan Major. <laughs> I prefer Stan Major. I definitely prefer Stan Majors. I prefer Stan Major. I prefer Stan Major. I prefer Stan Major. I, I prefer Stan Major. I prefer Stan Major. I personally don't. There you have it. Nine out of ten doctors prefer Stan Major over general anesthesia. <laughs> I heard Nick Lawrence's voice Nick in there. Nick Lawrence was that? in there, and boy, Gary was in there, too. Oh, was he really? Also known as Gary Bruce. What well, I sure hope he don't call himself now? boy Gary on the air up there. That would be bad. I no. blew him out of Cleveland, you know. I got better ratings than he had. Is that what it was? On, uh, so I'm you... on ERE, and, uh, yeah, I don't know what bullshit. Uh, excuse me, I don't know what crap he put <laughs> on overnight, but whatever it was, he Did you died. say the Bolstroy Ballet? Is he that died, what you were he saying? He died with your motorcycle buddy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's out of there, too. Oh, is he? and then See you, buddy! What? That was Jazz McKay. Oh, See ya, buddy. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> oh, he still hasn't lost it. He still got it. Congratulations, yeah. uh, congratulations, Neil. On twenty Thanks, years, I, 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 at uh, twelve thirty last night on one hundred and twenty-five stations, I did the same thing. <laughs> so You're I not going to believe this. Somebody sends me a portable toilet. It says, "Here's to twenty years down the toilet." <laughs> oh, the speaker's in the back. And it's a place called 225 Unlimited Toilet Bank. It's a place that sells, like, little uh, make-believe toilets. Hey, let's just reminisce with, about W. Snews for just a second. Yeah. Can we, well, now, which, that, which time? The first time you were there or the second time? The, the first time. Okay. Wagler, with the bullet holes in the... In, in the <laughs> right, right. In, the bullet holes in the front of the building and me doing a program with an umbrella. You remember that? Well, I, I'll the tell roof you, leaked. Not, well, no, wait a minute. There was, I'll tell you a better one than that. There was a day when we had a torrential rain, mm. and on the front door, do you remember this? Yeah. The Flooded, front door yeah. of the station was, like, warped, and there was a big opening between, remember the, the bottom of the front door and the sidewalk, and, like, gallons and gallons of water came pouring in off Flagler Street into the building, mm -hmm. and I can remember the phone guys crawling around on their hands and knees, 
putting that, what is that stuff they put on the contacts, that kind of like uh, dust or something, whatever the hell it is, to try to dry off the phone contacts, and they got done like about two minutes to eight. I'm sitting there in bare feet doing a talk show waiting to get electrocuted at eight o'clock on a uh, Monday night. I remember that. Yeah, that I was remember incredible. That. Yeah, that, the only good thing about that location is you can walk across the street and get some of the best cigars in the world. Yeah, that, way, that made it worthwhile. Yeah. That's it. Well, listen, it, it's great to talk to you, and uh, congratulations. I've been reading all the newspaper stuff about you, and I'm glad they rediscovered that you're still in the market, you know, yeah, the newspapers. Like, once every 20 years, they figure it's, you know, worthwhile. They bite their tongue, and they write something nice about me. You know how that goes. Yeah, who else is there? Because I, I haven't been listening uh, the last 10 minutes. I don't yeah. know who's... So, but wait a minute. You didn't hear the Larry King call? No. Yeah, everybody. So, so here. help me, as, yeah. as, as my hand to the sky, if you ever hear the Larry King call that I got, you will wet your pants at least 40 times a day. Was he awake? He was, he was like semi incoherent. He called on a, he was on a plane to L.A. The first connection we had was so, I said, it sounds like Larry King and a Ron Popeil Vegematic blender. That's what it sounded like. And then he actually called back again on a better connection to kiss my ass. I have never, I have never seen a man who's made more billions by licking ass than this man. And he even licked mine. In fact, I'm going to get myself a goddamn tattoo that says, Larry King licked this. I'm going to get a tattoo right on my well, ass. I got a bumper sticker that says, uh, how many jobs has Larry King got for you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff Rimmer's going to put one of those on his car, too. So, in other words, it was a normal Larry King call. Yeah. <laughs> it was just... This is Southern Bell Alfred. I have a collect call from Larry King. Will you accept the charges? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just your typical Larry King call. You got it. <laughs> that's that's something. Well, uh, hang in there, Stan. Hey, listen, I called on the 524 number. You think I'll ever get back in your good graces so I can have a VIP line so I don't have to redial a hundred times? It might cost you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good luck. See you, Bye, Stan. everybody. Bye. You notice how quick he got off as soon as I said cost you? Hey, listen, it was well worth it. John Lynch and Isia. Hey, Neil. In Chicago. <clears throat> I'm sorry. This is Alex Bennett. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> sounds like a real boring guy. Happy anniversary. You're a good guy, John, but you always were boring except when you got drunk at a party. <laughs> What's that? Uh, that? That's Disney, but Disney quit drinking, you know. Did he really? He quit since January. All, yeah. all the red has gone out of his face. I think that was only since he uh, got Howard off the year. Well, yeah, no, I think that's when the red came back out. into his sure face when he knocked Howard off. So, Isia, how you doing? I'm good, Neil. How, how are you? I'm doing great. How's my idol, Luis Miguel? Luis is, uh, he's right, ready to rock and roll. He's ready for you. Yeah? Yeah. When's he coming? I'd sure like to see that. <laughs> I bet you would. So, so how's, how's Disney doing up there? Is he uh, bringing that place to uh, great heights like he did here? Well, uh... Yeah. <laughs> That's the new, the new format on CKG. Wait, We're I, in the I, toilet I you again. I report, too, huh? Yeah. No, no, everything's going fine here. Um... Um, we do miss you, though, quite a bit. Yeah, I'll bet. It's, it's n nothing quite like you on the air up here. Uh-huh. That's for damn sure. <laughs> I mean, there's nobody going around talking about uh, every, everything else that goes on. So, uh, you know, we, we really can't live vicariously. We have to live vicariously through you, I should say. Yeah, sure. Just like here. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, that's uh, real exciting, John. <laughs> <laughs> And it's great hearing from you, especially Isia. Don't take it personal, John. You're okay. But Isia, she's uh, a goddess. What can I tell you? Oh, thanks, Neil. I love you. you I miss really us? miss you. That's only because she used to bring you checks. No, that's only because she went to the Luis Miguel concert with me, and she was drooling just as much as I was. I know. Well, listen, this October, we'll fly you down special for another up-close look. Okay, sweetheart? Yeah, I'm there. Okay, take care of yourselves. Thanks, you too, Neil. Happy anniversary. Give Disney a big kiss. Happy yeah. anniversary, Neil. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. God, was that boring. Okay, 1238. Now, she's, I love Isia. And by the way, that's not how you spell Isia. Okay? Yes, it is. Listen, Julio, that's not how you spell Isia. I S I A? Yeah. Spells Isia, doesn't it? No? I don't think so. I don't know what else that would oh, say. Oh, look at this. Here's the bookie. Did you hear that call yesterday? No. Oh, good. You wouldn't have showed up today if you would have. So anyway, if your favorite bookie joint is burned down, no problem at all because the pizza loft will be back in operation soon. Yeah, a guy, kid called up some Julio and he said that his best friend used to place all his bets. Did you hear it? No, at the it. pizza loft. <laughs> There's a guy up there. What did he say the guy's name was? Mike or some one of your stiffs. And he said that they were running a, running a bookie joint up there. Oh, yeah, I see you got that expensive house, Jeff. Jeff Cohen comes out of the closet today on 610 WIOD, okay? You know what I remember about him? Yeah. It stands out the most in my mind is when they catered the uh, Donny Osmond show. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. I always remember that for some yeah. reason. Yeah. 
D- there you go. Remember how Donny Osmond had his shirt buttoned up? He was sitting right where uh, Boca Bryan is right now, and he had his shirt buttoned up to his mm-hmm. the bottom of his chin. Not that he was nervous being in here with his wife buttoned up the extra button. Remember mm-hmm. her? She was really nervous. He was a great guy, but she was very uptight. Right very in this room, yeah. squirrely, psychotic. Squirrely. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Sorry, honey. He's uh, hairy and old now. It's all yours. Anyway, 1240 at WID. What are you laughing about, Craig? This week at Pompano <laughs> Park, the racing action heats up. The Philly and Mare Pacers. Now, this is, uh, I don't think this is right, you know what? I don't think this is right. Anyway, the top trotters square off in the exciting finals of the Van Lennep Memorial Series. That's tonight. But the Philly and Mare Pacers, that was uh, last night, wasn't it? Hey, listen, we don't care about that. Just send us the money over here. That's all we care about, Dick. On the weekends at Pompano Park, Bob Green says, yes, that's it. Just put the check in the mail. We don't care about the copy. That's window dressing. <laughs> anyway, uh, Pompano Park with simulcasting from the Meadowlands. Full card tonight and tomorrow night. And by the way, Fat Rich will not be there tonight, so you got a chance <gasps> to win. Okay, none of that. None of that BS. None Shocking. of that free floor show. Wow. Along with the great harness racing action, there's fine dining in the top of the park. You get a great meal. You get all kind of a floor show. In fact, probably m- my good friend Melissa Ruggieri will be there from the Escom Sentinel. And Super Dave. Oh, so she get, is your good friend. That's right. She loves yeah, me. Yeah, that's right. She loves me. She didn't Super realize she loved Dave. me. Super Dave. Super <laughs> Dave. Remember him? Yes. He's still around and he's still real fat. He's still. Exactly. Uh, good times, great food, <laughs> great racing made for a uh, night out you'll remember for a long time at Pompano Park. Racing every night except Tuesday and Sunday. Post time every night, including tonight, 7.30 in the BM. So Fidel has up the ante. From rafters to leaflets to jet fighters with missiles, what's the next move? We'll keep you posted. The best news. News, talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD. Yeah, but okay, twelve forty six at WID. So anyway, this is just out of control today. It's been uh, yeah. dynamite. Yeah. Here's here's a uh, a fax from Jerry Sullivan. Wow. Remember Jerry Sullivan? Good. Was Jerry heavens. Sullivan here when you were here? He's now the general manager of WBDN in Clearwater. Oh my 
B D N. So from Miami, and then of course when they demoted him here, he was driving the overnight news truck. Remember that? Remember that? Yeah. That's a true story. Yeah, I remember. That's the kind of company Cox Broadcasting is. Jerry Sullivan. One day he was the general manager. The next week he was driving the overnight news truck out on the streets. Yeah, I think it was the program director. Or the PD. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Is That's that ins- incredible? I remember that. In yeah. fact, from program director, the only thing more exciting than that will be when I come in next on Monday and Steve Nickel is taking Nora Berto's job. That'll be dynamite. You know, when he starts cleaning the toilets and doing stuff like that? Which will be good because he usually has his head down near one anyway most of the time. So that's great. Well, I sure don't know what WBDN is in Clearwater. Clearwater. I'll have Probably to. Probably a biggie, 250 watts. Yeah, I'll have to research it. Here's uh, Game Misconduct, uh, Alan Eagleson and the Corruption of Hockey by Russ Conway, a book from my good, close, personal friend Jeff DeForest. Who buys me a hockey book, which is incredible because he don't know nothing about it. But thanks, Deepo. Uh-huh. You're a hell of a guy, okay? You're really something. Now, speaking of Sid Levin, I don't uh, know what to tell you. Now, wouldn't you think if he was a mensch, he would be here today? The first guy I worked for in Miami 20 years ago. I don't know whether he, he really loved it. He really was the... Uh... Yeah, but that was in the old days. See, once I changed oh, well, the style of the show... Oh, changed, yeah. You know. Oh, then all of a sudden I was like a piece of crap. What Just like think? that goddamn Disney man when he went up to Chicago, you know, he was singing a different tune. What do you think Eucola would think of you today? Who? Eucola? She's rolling over in her grave, you know what I'm saying? She's saying it's the most disgusting show. That's my opinion. I'm Mike Disney. Happy oh. 20, Neil. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> how's Howard doing? I mean, uh, how's things going? Ah, uh, that was uh, <laughs> good, good. I'm, in, I'm actually in Los Angeles right now. Are you really? Yeah. We just had a call from John Lynch and Isia. Oh, my God. They weren't there with you, were they? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, are, thank are God. Are they still working for us in Chicago? No, I don't. Th- they said no, as a matter of fact. They said there's been a massive rebellion since you went to L.A., and when you come back, you got a couple of surprises. I don't know what they meant by that. I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so what's going on, Disney? Oh, I don't know. I just uh, I went and saw Joan Osborne last night. We're seeing the gin blossoms tonight. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just kind of hanging out doing that L.A. thing. In fact, John Lynch said that you've given up drinking, that your nose, that your whole head is all the, the uh, that blood is drained back into your system now, and that uh, you're, you know, you've lost that beet red complexion. Yeah, I don't have my eternal suntan. Oh, thank God. <laughs> That's probably from being in Chicago, not from uh, the drinking part. Right, right. Trying to clean up my life. Yeah. You're my inspiration. Sure. Yeah, just uh, exactly. Well, I was thinking about you. You know how that is, Mike. I just yeah, got overwhelmed. Absolutely. But, I just I think back to those great little uh, meetings we used to have at Denny's when we were putting our deal together. Yeah, years those ago. clandestine meetings. That's another thing about the class of this corporation, man. They got $8 billion. Where do they take you to meet you when they want to hire you to impress you with what a bunch of big spenders they are? They meet you at Denny's. You know, even a guy from uh, GBS. What the hell was his name? GBS. Danny DiLoretto. Even Danny DiLoretto, and in fact, he took me to Denny, so I'd say it's an equal match, okay? <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I used to go to those meetings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Denny's in 125th. In fact, I that's think that's right. Where, isn't that where we cemented the deal, my good friend Saul Foose? By the way, is Saul like in a prison near you, or where is he these days? I think he's near you. I heard he was in some country club prison in Orlando or something. Is he? Yeah. Because, God, I could sure use a good agent, man. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need an agent. He never got any of my cat. Yeah, that's what all you general managers always tell that's us. You don't need an that. agent. <laughs> we'll take good care of you. Well, I just wanted to call and say happy 20. Oh, well, thanks, Diz. You bet. And we miss you. Uh, same here. And Boy Gary misses you. Do you know Boy Gary starting Monday in the Boys Palm at J&O? No, he's not. Yes, he is. Are you serious? I swear to God. Swear oh, to you, God. Cola Cats and Tiny. He's going to be the PD and co-morning host, and uh, we, we're, the tears are in our eyes. And he wants to simulcast your show. Exactly. <laughs> Have a great year. Take care. See ya. Bye. Mike Disney. Boy, he's pretty boring. So he is, well, he's, a, um, he's an okay guy, but he's kind of boring. Oh, okay. Huh? Well, that just wasn't what I was going to say. And he's Irish. What were you, right now, along. I noticed, uh, that's right, you never got a chance to speak to him. Thank God. Yeah. Wow, was he one of your favorites? That would be one way of putting it. Yeah. You know, you know I, uh, what, what do you want me to say about Mike Whatever you Disney? would like to say. I, uh, oh, he's off the phone uh, now, isn't yeah. he? No, I have nothing Now's to say. Now's a good say. time to talk. Yeah, yeah. He's in L.A. He can't hear you. Oh, that's right. No, uh, there's nothing uh, I can say on the air about Mike Disney, so uh, we'll just let it go. Just slide along. It's, yeah, coast. We'll coast. No, that's over here. Oh. Anna Maria on the coast. Wendy Bennett. Uh, by the way, I sure hope Wendy got some of the food, okay? There's like 5,000 pounds of food she here. Did. Eat something, please, Wendy. I'm begging you. Have, you. have you noticed since you were here last? Wendy Bennett, yeah. you have to look like real yeah. close. Yeah. Like a like a pencil, like a walking pencil. If she had an eraser, huh? She looks great. See, he's into that look. What? Dark. Anorexic? Yeah. Yeah, that's why yeah. he keeps playing all those Karen Carpenter records. <laughs> yeah, he he just relates to it. And uh, but she had a plate of food. I saw her. I was on KAT. 
some old fart. Maybe you remember. It's one of our typical old, nasty, wonderful, lovely South Florida beach people called, Mister, you'll never last six months in this town with a goddamn attitude you'll got. You'll be out of here in six months. And the best part of it is we know he's deader than a doornail, okay? This old fart is pushing up daisies somewhere, probably pushing up weeds in a pickle patch somewhere. He's dead, dead, and I'm excited to be here. If for no other reason, that motive to be motivated me, whatever it is. News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Well, see, that's good. It's selective. You know, as we get older, we pretend, oh, I'm, my memory is failing. You know, I'm getting my Alzheimer's now. I can't remember who the hell you are. And, of course, it's not by accident. Who the hell have we got here? Oh, speaking of Miss Anorexia. Hello? Oh, she's probably reading one of her liners next door. Wendy Bennett, she's saying, it's 82 along the coast. That's what she's doing right now. And make it like five bucks an hour. So who the hell can afford to eat? Wendy, it's only a four-hour show, sweetheart. Come on, we fed you this morning again. Johnny Dork says he'll come in there and do uh, like a couple of extra hours for you. What do we unhold? It's not just Hank Goldberg. It's a hippopotamus. I'm, how come we haven't had the call from Hank yet? No, I, the only reason I got that out of the way was so I could play... Johnny Dork's an asshole. Just so I could get that on. Just in, <laughs> just in case anybody forgot from yesterday. Wendy, are you there? Wendy, sweetheart. Hello? Okay. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi. You know something? If I could scream this loud and right through the wall I here. I through a break. I said hold on. From, through a break. I'm sorry. What kind, what you know you, you're holding for me, man. What kind of crap are you playing right now? Who you got on right this moment? Listen, um, I got commercials going, but I was too lazy to walk down to 10 feet, so I thought I would just call. Well, thanks a lot, Wendy. Oh, happy 2-0, man. Yeah, thanks. I thought this party out there was for me, but I was wrong. Yeah. For you. For you, we could bring in a teacup full of food, and that'd be enough. You we know, understand I, that. The, no, your, your audience gets totally the wrong impression, but whatever. <laughs> this is your day, man, so I'm not going to yeah. spoil it for This you. call okay. is from 10 feet away, right? You hear the, notice the quality? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's in the other room. She's on the other <laughs> side of the same wall. And to show I you the... To to no, but I'm see. talking about the great equipment we got in this building. Yeah. To show you the Cox sisters with $8 million internally within the building. You sound like you're calling from Uranus. Well, yeah, we could string a tin Yeah, it sounds like Larry King. You're on Larry King's uh, lap. Yeah, it's like Larry King. Yeah. Oh, kind of. Yeah. Well, thanks, Wendy. Hey, good luck to you in the next 20 years. Thanks a lot. All right, take care. Keep playing that Gloria Estefan. We'll do that. See ya. All right. Not. So anyway, I guess Gloria and her husband are taking me out boating this weekend in honor of my anniversary. Stay away from her. Yeah, that's don't, what I Don't heard. go too close to Gloria. <laughs> if you see her coming down the road, just, you know, yeah, turn. Just steer clear. I love those PSAs she's doing for safe boating. Uh, yeah. If anybody knows, you know what I'm saying? If anybody knows about safe boating, here's Hollywood. Hello. Uncle Neo. Jess. I just wanted to wish you, before I sing my song, a good and firm to you and all the other Jewish guys there. Thanks. And an easy fast on Monday. It's Tynus Esther. Oi! What is it? Tynus Esther on Monday. Oi, vey. Tell George to look it up on the calendar. So what does that mean? On Tuesday, eat uh, two oh. extra hamantashen? I got a whole box. I got two boxes of hamantashen here. But you said you don't want me to bring any because they've no, got I'm all No, I'm taking them home to my mama. Okay. So to I'll your mama. You, I'll bring you some more. Okay. Anyway, here's your song, Uncle. Yom Hashanah Sameach. Yom Hashana Samaya. Oi! Yom Hashana Esrim Shanim Neil Rogers. Incredible. Yom Hashana Licha. We love you, Neil. Beautiful. Happy anniversary. Thanks buddy. a lot. Bye bye. Good uh, Purim. Nobody uh, uh, happy anymore. Purim. Nobody calls up and says, um, can I call my brother? Can I call my friend a douchebag? They don't do that anymore? Not quite That's as much. The we kind of cured him. Uh, Happy Purim. Well, she still calls, by the way, the cockamoon lady. Well, good. But those days are it? past. Huh? Oh, here's an important call. Hello. Hello. Yes, it is. Thank you for uh, picking up my call. I just called to say happy anniversary. This is an important call, right? Oh, my God. Glenn, what have you been doing for such a long time? What? <laughs> Nick Lawrence. Wow. I didn't recognize wow. your voice, Nick. This is this is the best producer in radio, the guy that got me those two male models from the uh, from the Elton John video I was talking about just the other day. That was my last uh, act that was of his thing at IOD. Last act of benevolence and kindness and great deed, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. It is Nick Lawrence. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's me. In fact, we just heard your voice on that I Prefer Stan Major cart, too. I was on that? Yeah, you I and Boyd <laughs> My stuff was gone. Yeah. Uh, well, I hear that uh, some of my friends are down there. I figured I could call in and say hello. We won't get in too much trouble. Yeah. And what about when Steve's call coming in? Mr. Kane probably will try and call because he asked me what time you go off the air. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> tell, him, tell him when I come on the air, that's when he goes <laughs> off the air. He 
forgot uh, what time the show ends. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure he did. Yeah. Your call, don't worry. Don't forget, Steve, we know you're listening right now. We're waiting for your call with bated breath. I'll make him get on the phone. Make him get on yeah. it. Okay, okay thanks, Bye-bye. Nick. See ya. Nick Lawrence, there you go. That's a real uh, guy right there. Yeah. Huh? He's going to be on the Mark Wahlberg show next week. On the Mark Wahlberg he show? He is doing what? On the 6th. What's he going to be doing? All these talk show hosts from all over the country. And yeah. One of them. No. I, saw, I saw Randy Rhodes on one of those talk shows. I think he's going to be on a Danny Bona douchebag show is what I think. <laughs> and you know, I'm, I'm getting ready. What, what is that? Oh, I thought you just left. Oh. Well. More annoying than LaToya Jackson. WIOD Miami Fort Lauderdale. News Talk and Entertainment Radio. 610 WIOD. The best news, period. 610 WIOD. In date, an accident in Westbound 836 approaching the Toll Plaza. Accident clearing north on US 1, just north of 304th Street. And keep in mind, the Grand Prix of Miami kicks off today at the Homestead Motorsports Complex. Expect delays in the area, especially the Homestead extension of the Turnpike. Emerald Palms is now leasing spectacular one and two bedrooms, as well as gigantic townhomes. Call 233-2022. This is Maribel for 610 WIOD. Esos carros. Felicidades, Neil. All right. The 610 WIOD Weather Channel forecast, partly cloudy, high around 85. 84 degrees right now. What is it? I don't know. Oh, I don't either. Uh, you know, Neil, I feel really bad. I don't have an ass cake for you. All I can give you is my, my greatest respect and admiration and appreciation. Well, thanks, Jennifer. We love you. I love you. Everybody loves you. And Sorry Larry, I don't have a piece I gave Larry you. King an ass cake, and guess what? <laughs> he licked it. So anyway, you were saying... I, it, I can't give you a piece of it, but uh, thanks for everything and congratulations. Well, when you find Vinny, we'll share a piece of that. Okay. See ya. I get him so first. One to two hour. We got a Leo pretty now thing. The station that delivers presents a live one. A deliverance weekend. All weekend long. You can qualify by winning video cassettes of the movie Deliverance. What is it you require? We require that you listen to the radio all weekend long. Don't say anything, just do The grand prize winner will be flown to Dothan, Georgia for a canoe trip for two down the Kahunawasi River, including accommodations in beautiful and trees. It's easy to win. Now let's you just drop them back. Just take them right off. This thing is... Take them off. Simply be the tenth caller every time you hear Ned Beatty squeal like a baby. Squeal, squeal. It's a deliverance weekend all weekend long. From a station that gets you where it hurts. Q95. You son of a bitch. Okay, 107 at WID. Scott and Laura Schwartz are here. Scott, of course, the great general manager of WTMI, your pseudo-intellectual classical station. What is that? Oh, it actually brought me a gift. It's probably like uh, Mozart's Greatest Hits or some uh, cockerel like that. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. That's a good pen. That's one of those, like, uh, what are those? Like fake Mont Blanc. Like a a fake Mont Blanc. Cost about 98 cents. Yeah. And falling falling in love with classical music from WTMI. All you suits out there, baby. Here you go. Thanks so much to our good friends at WTMI who only wish that their audience was alive. But nonetheless, they have a very high uh, ranking in there because they're all uh, fancy schmancy and drive expensive cars. That's, That's what they want. Here's uh, Hollywood. Hello. Neil? Yes, sir. Hey, happy anniversary. Thank you so much. Uh, last night when uh, Scrudlin got that penalty, yeah. he, uh, Pot Van gave you a tribute. He goes into his, uh, he's, he started to say, Un, and then he started, oh, that's a bad break. And then he uh, paused for a minute, and then he went back to unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, I notice he's been saying that a lot lately. I've had a tremendous impact on Denise, even though she won't admit it. Uh, it. Yeah, those two guys are something else. Yeah. That last goal they scored, there was about a 20-second pause. 16.9 seconds left. It was one of the saddest moments in my life. Pathetic. We do that great job killing off those penalties, and we're, like, just absolutely on fire. We missed the empty net twice. Stu Barnes is, like, psychotic there. He just can't put it away, and the puck either, and then uh, we blow it. But we'll take the point. Yeah. The uh, Chris Mort says, uh, it, you know, oh, they're saved by Van Beesbrook, and then there's, like, 20 minutes of dead air, 20 seconds of dead air, yeah. and then he finally comes up with, oh, it's in the net. Yeah, he said it trickled through, and I think he was talking about the puck, too. Yeah. 
Well, thanks a lot, Pally. Okay. And have Happy a great anniversary. life. Happy anniversary. Okay, so anyway, first of all, before uh, I'm sure that Norm is going to get really emotional about the next call, but before we do that, what the hell was I just... I arranged oh, you arranged the next call. Well, you know, now that we got J.C. here, this is small potatoes. How you doing, Brian? Hey, Neil. Happy anniversary. Here's the star of WFTL, a budding star on the horizon over there. Can I, I want to call two people douchebags. Yeah. First, I want to call the Pizza Hut delivery man who came to my house yesterday morning and douchebag. And yeah. I know he's listening to you because he had you on in his car. And I also want to call my friend John a douchebag because he follows you around to every personal appearance begging yeah. me to go with him. And he always says, oh, Brian would have been here, but he didn't show up. And I said, well, in that case, why don't you get out of here, John, because I sure don't want to see you. So he is a douchebag. So why don't you show up, Brian? What's the problem? Did Norm get you all paranoid and nervous that night? What are you talking about? I mean, that night that you came to the pizza law. Yeah, I remember that. My friend John tricked me. I didn't know that that's where I was going. Yeah. I guess that was the same way when Norm took you home that night. You didn't know where you yeah, were. I mean, right. it's just a joke. That, it's that's just right. a little joke. That's just a joke. Hey, Neil, how come, how, how come Larry King said, said such bad things about you in the newspaper? But then uh, you didn't hear his call before. He kissed my ass right oh here on the ear. God. My cheeks are blushing. Larry King kissed my ass right here on the radio from a call on a plane to L.A. What did he say? Good question. That's the question of the day, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he, he was somewhat incoherent. But I think what he said was... Hi, this is Larry King, and they don't come any better than Neil Rogers. Something basically, like that. Basically. Yeah. Was he with one of those 19-year-old girls that he hangs out with? I don't know. You'd know more about that than I would, Brian. Uh-huh. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Anyway, Neil, are you going to be on the air? How many more years are you going to be on the air? <laughs> I would say uh, not too many, hopefully. Four or five. <laughs> four or five we're grooming, we're grooming the seat for you, Brian, after you do your, uh, you know, your internship uh, yeah. at WFTL. Uh, my internship. After you my, get into a real radio my station. My community, sir. It is a real radio station. What? 1,000 watts of power, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you one thing. Last night, compared to QAM, you guys were booming. I'm hey, leaving the game line. Q QAM must be, now that it's been sold, they've cut their power down to 2 watts at night. You couldn't hear it, like, right outside the arena. And remember what a signal that used to have. Yeah. Years I think they're ago. getting public service credits for that. Now, you've lasted 20 years. How long is uh, Boy Gary, how many days is Boy Gary going to last doing mornings at j and mm -hmm. What is up with that? <laughs> this, yeah. this guy asks the best question. It's uh, Brian the board up and the uh, part-time talk show host no, at WFTL. I'm a full-time talk show host at you're a, WFTL. You're a full-time talk Six host? Six days a week. On what time? All different times. Yeah. Uh, overnight, and then I'm on Saturday evenings as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, overnight's from like, what, 3 to 5 in the morning, 3 now, to 6? 3 to 6 in the morning. So you follow wow. the famous Mark Scheinbaum. That is correct. Who wow. is a legend in his own mind in the industry. <laughs> Huh. Who's saying, wow, is it that guy that's wanted in 17 states? Yeah. But I know that if I were working from midnight station. to 3 on a 250-watt radio station, I would say that I'm a legend in the industry, too, and be a member of the American Talkers Association like Mark Scheinbaum. Mm -hmm. Tell him you want midnight to 3. Stick his ass on from 3 to 6, Brian. Well, if Peter Bolger's listening, that's some good There advice. you go. Get this kid on where there's somebody still awake, okay? Don't put him on there where everybody's got their head on the pillow. Anyway. So to speak. Well, listen, thanks, Brian. It's good hearing from All you. Right, bye, bye And Norm says love and kisses. Oh, he got off of there quick when I said that. A little uh, out of it, I would say. What's that, Brian? Yeah. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. <laughs> he's a lot, under a lot of duress. I think like a pink duress. Huh? So, yeah. Spit memory, it out. Come on, you can uh, do it. Speaking of... Oh, wait a minute. Don't, don't oh. say a word. Just a second. Okay. South Florida cries out, take the bird and pluck him. <laughs> Nothing. Once you've got it, you've got it. And you know something? I haven't seen that cart in years. <laughs> and I'm just spinning that thing around like a dreidel <laughs> yeah. today. And there it is. You see? Where's the classic call where he says, uh, just shut up and say something? Oh, he already played that. I hate to break the news to you, Johnny. We're way <laughs> ahead of you, okay? You better go back to your Marty Robbins records, Johnny. We're way Marty ahead of you. Robbins. So, so Kelly, Kelly so, uh -huh. Craig. Yes. Kelly is. Craig is pregnant. Yes. So I take back, sorry, Kelly, because I know she loves me. She's called a show a few times in the past, which well, she'll never do again. It. Yeah. Well, I can't imagine that somebody really stuck a bicycle pump up her butt and that she oh. gained 30 pounds overnight, you know. Oh, that was the other. By the way, that's Scott and Laura's bratty little kid making all that noise, <laughs> just in case you wondered, okay? Sort of adds to the ambiance. Yeah. 
Take them in, take your kids into TMI while a clan, while a Mozart is playing, Lori, and open the mics for that. Huh? I can just see all those all those prune faced uh, hot potatoes sitting there listening to that classical music. Wow. All those assholes that haven't had a BM in twenty years <laughs> huh. listening to their ha- Hansel and Handel and Gretel. Can you imagine that? And all of a sudden, these babies start wailing around about. I love it. They didn't like to pluck the bird. Who's that? The babies? Yeah. I yeah. don't know why. I think they did like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now Brian they did Andrews. like that. Yeah, yeah Brian yeah. Andrew. Next door to Channel 7, by the way, speaking of the bird. But anyway, that's another story for, of a horse of a different feather. 114 at WIOD. The con- round and round they go. And slowing down is not cool. The Grand Prix of Miami, live Sunday afternoon at 1.30, only on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Thanks, Norm. There we go. Star of the morning, 6 to 9 a.m., WFTL, 1400 a.m. If you live real near the uh, tower, you can pick it up. Thank you, Stephen, so much. Let's go with the light and cut the crap. Okay. So anyway, it's 117 at WIOD. This has been a day that will probably go down in the annals of broadcast history. Yeah, you'll remember this. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, yes, the anus of broadcast yeah, history. Yeah, that's what Johnny said. He said it'll go down in your anus. But it'll... Hey, Neil, this is Randy West. And as per our phone conversation, I talked to Peter North the other day. And he tells me your real name is Neil Down. And he still ain't interested. So anyway, speaking of that, here's Randy West Productions sending me a fax saying, Happy 20th anniversary on behalf of everybody. We sincerely wish to congratulate Uncle Neil Rogers on his ability to withstand 20 years of South Florida radio. We know it's been nothing but hell for you, and et cetera, et cetera. From the people who work with, I can't say what it says there. You see what it says? It begins no. with a C-O. C-O. Well, yeah. it's a word for chickens. Oh. Oh. From people who work with that <laughs> to the one man who can't stand working for Cox as in broadcasting. We love you, Neil. Keep it up, your friends. And all. How do you like that from that ugly, uh, washed-out Randy West? Wow. Yeah. When in doubt, act burned out. He's a good guy, but boy, is he ugly. Here's, uh, uh, oh, geez, I almost knocked over Anna Maria's uh, thing there. Here's our friend. Hi. Here's the Slim Knots Landing Lady. That's me. <laughs> you know something? You haven't uh, seen our birded friend here in years. No, I haven't. Mm-mm. You remember the Knots Landing Lady? Sure. You'd be in shock to see her now. Lost 85. 85 pounds. No, it's the yeah. Knots Landing slash Melrose Place Lady. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know I'm not the caliber of call that you've been having, but I had to call. Thank God for that. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're no Stan Major. You're no Mike Disney. Well, I don't owe you. You're no know John Lynch. I owe you my life, but not any money. Lost 85 pounds. How much do you weigh now? <laughs> what? Isn't that a terrible question to ask somebody? No. Yes, what, did, what did you ask her? Oh, I asked her how much she was weigh- She weighed now. That's the most disgusting. It is? Yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't realize. 427. <laughs> no, she lost 85 pounds. Yeah. Well, she's a shadow of her former That's self. That's right. She yeah. has probably a few more. What is it that you Dark want, Johnny? I want to bop with you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's having fits. You're almost skinny enough for Johnny. Yeah, almost. See, yeah. I'm being complimentary. She won't say and in this particular case, I'd definitely say stick with your husband. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, my husband's a good guy. Right, exactly. Stick with him. But we will, I don't know what I would have done without you. Yeah. So I had to call him. Well, I saved your life. I know that. I I guarantee you that. In fact, my uh, attorney, Richard Enton, which I wouldn't mention his name on the air, but there's a guy that's got a pooping now that's like Mount Rushmore, and I begged him the other day, get the Atkins book, do yourself a favor. He just found out he's diabetic. His triglycerides are 600, and, uh, you know, I take no diabetes medication anymore. My blood sugar was 92 this morning with no medication. I'm doing so great. It's phenomenal. My blood pressure medicine, I'm down to like a tenth of what I was taking before. My doctor calls before. He's lost 40 pounds. I saved my doctor's life. How do you like that? That's the switch, right? Yeah. He ought to be paying me. Every time I go in there, he ought to have a check for me. How do you like that? Did you send him a bill? Exactly. (laughs) He's a good guy, though. It's a great diet. People that uh, would rather take drugs than try that diet are insane. Yeah, they really are. A lot of people out there doing that. They well, are. I mean to congratulate you. Thank you. That was all. Okay. And That's you why he came in. He didn't come here for me. He came to congratulate you on a weight loss. Oh, that was it. He knew I was calling. Right. <laughs> and he knew Stan would be calling. Oh, yeah. And his good buddy, Disney. Oh, yeah. Don't forget that one. <laughs> yeah. That was a... Oh, boy, what a call that was. You know, now, were you in the room when he was on the phone, or were you out? Now, I was in the room. I just really... Because it never dawned on me to hook you two guys up together. Thank and before you knew God. it, he was gone, because my finger was on the button so fast, I'm not sure why. It was kind of a reflex action. <laughs> he I was just, gone like a shot. I never got around to... But one thing you got to say for him, he's consistent. He had basically nothing to say. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Although exactly. with Bert, that might have been an interesting conversation. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. No. Just count your blessings that it worked out like it did. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. 
Glenn's in retirement. He's living the life of Riley, and I'm over here uh, slaving away over a hot stogie every day. Day after day after yeah. day. <laughs> over a hot bottle of Soleil water. Yeah. Just for us. Well, listen, keep it up. Okay. And tell your brother to quit bugging me for hockey tickets. Yeah, well, you know. It's just a joke. It's a, he can bug me anytime. Okay. Have a great day. Take care, Neil. Thanks, Thanks sweetheart. Bye. Keep it up. Bye. Okay. So She's you, like a shadow of her former self. Do you know how many thousands great. of pounds this audience has lost thanks to me and Dr. Bobby Atkins? Now, you uh, continue to consistently, as the years go by, uh, avoid at all costs the movie uh, huh? Raging Bull, correct? Oh, I have it. I know you have and it. And I've still watched about the first, you know, that opening scene that goes on for about five and a half hours? With the music, you know. Why? You know, this movie, this da, 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 da. movie that won Oscars, De Niro yeah. won Best Actor Oscar, this movie that was voted by Jake the National right? Critics it's has the, the best movie of the 80s. And, you and being a big sports fan as you are, I'm sure that boxing has, is right up your alley. It's beside the point. It's like, it's like the movie Cobb that's about Ty Cobb. I watched, I loved it. Because it was about baseball, well, I thought it was beside, about Cobb County. Uh, but it's beside the point. I thought now, that, was, that was like Deliverance Part 2 Did you Cobb. at least see Pulp Fiction? No. What's wrong with you? you got to wait for Phil Henry. <laughs> What's wrong with you? A lot. The best movie I have ever seen in my life in the modern era <laughs> is, pulp, <laughs> is Pulp Fiction. Now why you know laughing? why he's not on the show anymore. Oh, I what never had any doubts. Uh, John you have Re an important call on line A. You, you should know why I will not see that movie. What movie? John Revolta is in Pulp Fiction. I've had uh, three or four people Oh, we got somebody more important than you on here. Steve! Kane Pasa, happy anniversary, Neil. Thank God for Steve Kane calling. I thought I'd never say that, but with the bird like uh, on a roll here, thank God for any interruption at this point. Steve. I just tuned in. Like, hey, bird, how you doing? Steve, would you agree with me that Pulp Fiction is a great movie? Well, I was going to open uh, my call by saying the bird is on the money, one of the greatest yes. of all time. Yes. Just, 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 just tell me what your problem is. I've had three or four friends of mine who I've made watch the movie say yeah. to me, I'm going to tell you, I hate John Travolta. I'm I'm going to tell you this. It pisses me off, but I'm going to oh, tell so you. Words, I'm not the only one that can't he stand He was great. Yeah, and they say he was great. Okay. I'll watch it. It's on the dish. I got, you know, 85 dishes in there. I can watch yes. it. Yes. Yeah, trust me, you'll love it. By the way, Bird, you sound uh, a lot more ballsy than the last time I heard you. A lot more what? Ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> now, what exactly does that mean, well, Steve? Uh, well, I suppose my psychologist would say assertive. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank anyway, you. Uncle Neil, like, it's... Uh, He's uh, had a lot of time to let them rest and grow. You know how that is. Great, uh, great <laughs> day for you in this market. 20 years, hard to believe. I'm going to tell you something. You know, it's like having a bar mitzvah, Steve. You know what that's like? You know, you, you build up to it, and there's all the trepidation, and you got to go through all that business of learning your bar mitzvah mafter, and you're real nervous. And then all the gifts start pouring, and you say, you know something? This wasn't so bad yeah, after all. It's pretty well, good. This yeah. almost made it worthwhile. And uh, you didn't have the... It was probably while you were on the air that I had the Larry King call. Oh, oh, Larry, can you talk to Larry? I swear to you, you would be on the floor for we I'm not exaggerating. In my life, I've never... This is the same guy, the same guy who only weeks ago on a Phil Henry show said that Neil Rogers oh, is the worst oh. talk host in the world that he's ever heard in his life. He calls me from a plane in L.A. The phone connection is so bad, he sounded like he was a, like king in a blender. And he calls back a second time. My cheeks are so red from being kissed by Larry King. It's unbelievable. That it's incredible. That is the most disgusting thing I have ever heard. Exactly. Oh, God, what a hypocrite. Yeah. Anyway, we've been through some great times here over 20 years, no question of that. You remember the first day I arrived in the market? I remember the first day you showed up at W Snooze during my very short tenure as program director, and it was on there at night, and you were, like, wandering around out in the outer office with your tape under your arm from Orlando, and I kept thinking, who the hell is this pushy Jew, and what the hell does he want? God, you were right on the money with that. And he, <laughs> like, and he kept, uh, he was persistent, and he just kept coming back and coming back, and no matter how much we said, go back to Orlando, we don't know what you're all about, he kept uh, plugging away, and here he is. And I meant what I said in the paper there. She didn't make that up. You know, here's a guy, we've had our differences to say the least and uh, politically to say the very least but nevertheless here's a guy who has taken the uh, Saul Foose's misfortune and by the way I understand he's uh, cooling it out right here in Florida you're kidding me. Took Saul Foose's misfortune of uh, putting him into an impossible position at WABC in New York when he had like 10 minutes an hour on the air. Comes back to this market, takes a make-believe phantom radio station, mm -hmm. and makes a living out of it for himself and all of these other people. And uh, I commend you for that. I really mean it. Well, I must say, when I read that, it uh, brought tears to my eyes. You were very kind. <laughs> Steve. You were very kind. However, you know, the, uh, the project uh, will not be complete until we're in Dade County competing with you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, 
I look forward to that. Terror, and terror again, has just stricken my heart. A tremendous uh, tribute to you, Uncle Neil, and uh, hopefully you'll, in about eight years or so, be calling me on my 20th anniversary if mm -hmm. I live that long. It's a deal. You got it. Hey, good talking to you. Take Thanks, care, Steve. Bird. Okay, Steve. All right, bye-bye. See ya. Wow. He well, did call. He said, you know, you're pretty good, except for a couple of minor character flaws. Is that what so, he said? That's what he said, yeah. I didn't pick the in whole the thing paper, up there. Yeah. Oh, in the paper. Yeah. What? But I'm working on it. We oh, yeah, yeah. Perfect, that is like what he uh, said. Uncle Steve. Yeah. He's oh, that's a, he's, right. Uh, you know. Character he's flaws. He's Steve. Steve is Steve. And like, uh, you know, like I said, a guy that you got to make a living, you got to make a living. Right? Isn't that what it's all about? Right. And here's a man who's taken like this, uh, the fractions, the numbers are so infinitesimal and made it, <laughs> seriously, and made it into a living. They got eight, eight million spots an hour. And, and Rose uh, Folger. Rose Folger is PD. And even Buddy Bud Paxson, with his brilliant programming knowledge, couldn't outdo the programming on a light bulb. So he buys the station and leaves it all the same. Yeah, if it's he doesn't do. I mean, when Buddy Bud can't put better programming on than uh, you can, and you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look at all the great stations he's got. Yeah, Here, look here's at a man who, by the end of this year, will own 2,500 radio stations in America. Not one of them will be worth listening to. Now that's a talent. You know what I'm saying? Well, seriously, <laughs> seriously. How many formats can you come up with that nobody will listen to? When, when Johnny Dark and myself worked together in the '60s in yeah. Sarasota, Buddy Bud wasn't he a local salesman at one of the radio stations? And we he bought YM. He bought YNF. Oh, he did. I'm sorry. You remember he still owes me my two weeks from YNF? That's right. Y and, and then I went back yeah. YND, right. And then I went back to Now FPB. I remember, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I called him one day. He said, I'm a born again Christian. I never screw out you out of money. And then all of a sudden I heard the dial tone. Buddy Bud. Buddy Bud. Buddy Bud. He's my buddy. Hallelujah. Ah. Oh, I wonder, you know, I should have asked Steve if they also on the light bulb have to uh, read that manual. I think they do. You know, that Christian manual that the Buddy Bud puts out. <laughs> I'm serious. I have a. I will bring it on Monday if I remember. I have a copy I obtained through clandestine means. You have to read and sign this. Uh, oh, yeah. Remember, I read some of that on the air. Yeah. And uh, in Jesus' name, et cetera, and so on. And then you have to genuflect and cross yourself and make the sign of Buddy Bud and et cetera. <laughs> it's incredible. One twenty-eight at WYOD. There. It's a technological breakthrough. Pound IOD. Mobile One cellular customers can call for free. Pound IOD. AT&T wireless customers can call for free. Pound IOD. The only number to remember. Pound IOD. Free from Mobile One Cellular, AT&T Wireless, and News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Would you like to read headlines like Dan Rather? Grasp world events like Walter Cronkite? Explain the news to the public like Peter Jennings? No? Then there's a trading center just for you. The Bird School of Newscasters. The Bird School of Newscasters will teach you to relate the news on radio or TV in an unforgettable way. People will be talking about your newscasts all day after you grasp just a few pronunciation techniques. You'll be saying things like, Harold says pull-out plans were ordered after new evacuations of the peace agreement suggested it may rather new evaluations of the peace agreement. Oh, is it evacuation or evaluation? I'm sorry, it's eva evacuations <laughs> of the peace agreement. <laughs> and and I'll we'll feature the highlights from a thousand se secret tape recording. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll learn to pronounce different government programs, such as not to chop social security benefits and keep the public aware of top world events. And the CIA would have to assess the Contras or assist the Contras. <laughs> and the Bird School of Newscasters will assess you in pronouncing foreign terms. Nuvo. 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 Nuevo. Nuevo. Learn the pronunciations of geographical areas like 1920s movie star and Kansas graduate Charles Buddy Rogers. Kansas. <laughs> and other geographical areas such as Iran, Kuwaiti, Soviet Yum Yum, North Vietnam. Vienna, Australia, and cities such as Washington, D.G., San Francisco, and Penis, Arizona. Call the Bird School of Newscasters now, or write to Bird School of News Cancer, Post Orifice Box 10335, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, zip code 33000. You'll receive information on the School of Newscasters, as well as the School of Speech Writers, School of Poets, and the Bird School of Court Reporters. The Bird School of Newscasters, where we guarantee the lowest prices. <laughs> so I remember so vividly, I went to Pete Bolger one day, and I said, Pete, are you going to continue to allow me to get away doing this news like that? And he just went, oh, don't change anything. Don't yeah. change anything. It's like I said, traffic, you can easily do. Ay, Dios mío, esos carros. There you go. If you can say that, you're hired. Although you don't have the ass for it, to be honest with you. I see. 
Oh, my God. Phil Latzman. How the hell did you how the hell did you manage to do this in this market for 20 years? Did I do what? This? Just, just in this market, just being I'll here. tell you one thing. Know, knowing what I know now, if I sat down and today were the first day and they said, okay, you got 20 years of this to do, I would go home and blow my brains out. I mean, <laughs> no question about it. I don't know. I'll I tell you what. Uh, Every day is a major challenge, as Stan would say. If, if it wasn't for you, I, I don't know I don't know what would become the bird, of the The bird has got town. tears. I'm sure the bird is drowning in a <laughs> sea of tears after hearing that last. See, it was worth my fighting. It there wasn't. tears to my eyes. Oh, yeah. God. Yes. I can't believe you have that, for one thing. It hasn't seen the light of day. Oh, I got it. In years. I had to wipe, I had to wipe the crust off of that. Did, Ab you, did you hear from Pete, by the way? Bolger? Yeah. No. No, I'm talking, to, I'm talking to Neil. I, well, well <laughs> Is this my show again now? Me. He comes all the way down here from Lakeland, and you think it's my show just because it's my 20th anniversary? Wait till you hear this. Yeah, he's right. Now we're all even. Yeah. Well, I, w I was just actually... Miriam! I was just actually at lunch with Pete and uh, and Paul Castronovo, a guy that I'm, I'm sure that you... Uh, one of my favorites, yeah. <laughs> what are your, what are He's your, ripped off some of my favorites? best material at Castronova. <laughs> oh, and by the way, come to find out, thank God, it was uh, Joey, uh, what's his name, Lawrence that he had on this morning and not uh, Vinny. Thank God. Who had on? For Castronova. Oh. I'm telling oh, you. Oh, my God, look at this. The vending machine guy is here. Whoa. What were you just saying? I'm telling Phil? you. No, Phil, I'm talking to the caller here. <laughs> I keep... Phil. Oh, no, I, I was just saying this, that, that they pass along their regards as well, and I know that you uh, you received a fax from Paul and Mitch Lewis right. safely over at that at Zeta. Yes, I did. And uh, and I said thanks, Mitch. And 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 we want to tell you that how you saved AM radio for us, Neil. Saved AM radio in this town. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And FM two on Zeta. <laughs> right. I had a lot bigger numbers than Paul does, but hey, you know that was uh, Howard was not here. Then that's a good excuse. Wrecked him. There you go. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Phil. Hey, best regards. Happy anniversary. Thanks. Now. See ya. I or thought it was Colonel. Phil Saltzman. It was Phil Latzman. <laughs> Phil Saltzman. I haven't heard from Phil Saltzman in a long no. time. No. Yeah. Uh, the Colonel. Remember the Colonel? Yeah. So you remember yeah. your good friend, the Big Dave, over here? Uh, of course I do. How ca uh, you think I could, fame? I could forget him? Probably not. No. I'm trying. Are you? Well, just goes to show you, if you think you remember that bird thing was good, wait till you hear this. <laughs> My name is Figaro, and I'd like you to know, everywhere I go, I hear Neil Rogers show. Young men are nice to me, they bear their chest to me, there's just one problem, they don't show the rest to me. I am very happy living in this country And it's all because of the Neil Rogers Show It's the Neil Rogers Show Huh. 137, that's what he said, yeah. So anyway, that was Capri, and yeah. I think uh, in honor of the great work that he did, because that was a tremendous year we had on yeah. Zeta, I think we ought to take up a collection. He's, you know, I mean, he's going through a second childhood. I mean, when you're like 19 or 20, you know, leave the house, and you you just leave everything behind, and you pack a bag, and you go out and try to find your fortune. When you're Dave's age, generally speaking, when you have mm. a good-paying job in Morning Drive at Love 94, working for a good, upstanding go guy like a buddy Bud Paxson, you just don't do that and go out to seek your fortune in L.A. He sounded real good. On that morning show on Love yeah. 94. Yeah. That's so what was the problem? That that I don't so know. So in other words, if I give him your number in Lakeland for money, is that... Um... Yeah, you be sure to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say the bird was in town the other day, and he is really flush. He came into a ton of money. And if there's anything he can do for you to repay you for those great days... To completely change the subject. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. have on my on my mind my, my biggest Do thought... you remember Miriam? Was Miriam cutting my hair when no. you were here? No. I oh, have really? not met Miriam. Miriam comes in and cuts my hair Hi. every few weeks. Miriam is the trim lady. Larry King She show. gives the quickest trim in On town. On CNN, you know that uh, hideous talk show he does every night at 9 o'clock? Who is it? <laughs> Who? I have to say the name again? I don't have a bone spot. Yeah. Yeah. Every I, time, I've been doing this a long time. Every time I used to, years ago, 
every time I would turn that show on, you know, yeah, and I mean every time. Yeah. I don't mean virtually every time. Every time. Every time I turned it on, Larry would go, okay, to Cincinnati or whatever, yeah. and he'd hit the button and you would hear, Howard Stern rules. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and Larry would go, I don't know. What I know how to do a talk show. I don't know what that means. Yeah. And he'd go to the next call. And every single time I turned it on, he, he would go, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Blow well, $50. he's been on that show. On, uh, he's called into the show at the time, you know. Thanks, Miriam. He knew exactly what Thanks. it was. I'm saying he has no sense Larry, of Larry, do you know what it is? No. <laughs> he knows what it is, don't you? No. All right. Just he's no, just a hard ass. Yeah, no sense of humor. No. Did you hear Larry King kiss my ass before? Miriam? <laughs> she, just, she just wants to eat. She don't care about me or Larry King. She just saw Flores bring in tons and tons of pizza here. She says, blow it out your ass, fat. So I can't eat that, don't you understand? We're not all as skinny. I'm doing great. I've lost 35 pounds. I'm doing good. Look at this. Look at the, look at the gigantic, uh, I'm almost down to the next shirt size if I inhale real tight. Anyway, it's 140 at WIOD. Yeah. All over South Florida, baseball players are getting ready for the new season, and so are we. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, March 5th, 6th, and 7th, talk Marlins baseball with Defoe and the Marlins live from spring training on News Talk and Entertainment Radio, 610 WIOD. Johnny Dark Sinners Hold. He was a big man. He stood six foot two or three. Maybe even four and was big. He was a big man, weighed 240, 60, maybe 200, and maybe 300 pounds. He was a big man, walking the hall, walking the land, riding the radio, riding the coast. He was Johnny Dark. This is a story about a man named Johnny. He was a big man. Johnny the big man, the legendary Johnny Dark. He walked the land. He carried a burrito in his hand. Or was he just happy to see you? Johnny Dark! It was a long time ago. Long time. Could have been a year. Might have been two years. Might have been three. Could have been longer than that. Might have been six. Could have been ten. He was out of work for a very long time. He was a big man. Tall. Walked the land. Burrito in his hand. He was... Johnny Dark! Yeah, it's good for you. It's got a little, uh, it's got a little shrimp underneath the uh, thing. It says shrimp for the shrimp. So anyway, it's 143 at WIOD. Matt, have we heard from a list of uh, winners here today or what, huh? Call after call. Celebrity after celebrity. Yeah. Now, it takes a lot to impress me. Now, I don't know which was better, Larry funny. King call or Mike Disney. That's right. Yeah. It, they're it's, right it's, there. It's they're pretty, the he was a close level. second, yeah. Yeah. They're sort of even. It's, it's hard to pick one. You know, <laughs> no, actually, as good of a time as I'm having here today, I'm, I'm really anxious more so than usual for two because I want to, like, sit off by myself in a corner somewhere and contemplate the Larry King call and see if I could... No, no, seriously, I'm trying to figure out what it was. No, you're going to be contemplating that all weekend. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to examine well, you, in my you're gonna mind... You're going to go home. You know, do, what do you do? You usually take a nap? Or well, I will down? today. I'm under tremendous duress <laughs> after that call. You may not. Because there's one thing I wanted to say to Larry. What word did you say? Exactly. Like, what was he talking about? And, and, and don't stop looking now, you know? You keep saying that. It was just getting that. good. You keep, you've been saying that ever since the call. This is for hours now. You've been saying... <laughs> What was he talking but about? But I was positive it was going to be Phil Henry doing a voice or something. There's no way in I the really world. thought it how was. How could Larry King, how could a man like this, a multimillionaire known all over the... I go to everywhere, Europe, I go to yeah, Rome, I go to sure. Berlin, all and you world. turn on CNN International. He's there morning, noon, and night with those goddamn suspenders and that ugly puss. There he is. You can't get away from him. A man who's known worldwide. Here's a guy that comes on a year three weeks ago. We got it on tape. Phil plays it every five minutes. Neil Rogers is the worst talk show host I ever heard in my life. The worst talk host in America. And he comes on here and says, Neil, Oh, God, 20 years and you're the best and the rest of your station sucks. Whoever he's licking at the moment, who's ever in front oh, of you. Oh, yes. That's the way he's been for years. You Who, know that. Exactly. So whoever, it happens to whoever's you. Whoever's in tongue range. What's the question? Exactly. How long can you lick? And don't stop doing it now. That was astonishing. So Johnny Dark sure got a lot of play in here. I'll tell you that. Now, don't you think he ought to play some of this on the coast this afternoon? Especially that Johnny Dark's... Uh an asshole one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what we would give to hear that. Just come on, Johnny. Let's see what kind of balls you got, man. Just one time, we'll loan it to you. Johnny Dykes and Assholes. In stereo on the coast. Oh, man. With that, I get, bet you they get 95 sure. Huh. Easy. Can you imagine all those Julios hearing that? They would go nuts on the coast. He'd get requests for it. I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, uh, you never know who might be calling. Ay, Dios mío, esos carros. Exactly. Here's Miami. Hello. By the, by the way, I was amazed to hear the Telemundo tape a little while ago. You played it during the traffic. The Telemundo tape? 
You know what I'm talking about? The Telemundo it, tape? He played it. Yeah. Oh, I heard it during oh, the traffic. Oh, yeah. Well, it was I, on Telemundo. And I could have played. Ay, Papa Juan Pablo. <laughs> but instead I played. <laughs> there it is. Speaking of I, Papa Juan Pablo, here's uh, several men, a uh, legend in their own bodies. Nice picture of you and the Herald, by the way, Al. Is it, uh, they, they really run a picture? <laughs> no, a naked one? I want to tell you something. This man is so fat now he can barely breathe, okay? It's wait, Goldstein. Now, now we had, wait we had, a second. Listen to me. Yeah. We had Larry King on kissing my ass earlier in the show, which even I can't believe, but it was him. Now okay. now we're going to hear right. Al Goldstein's last breath live on the radio. I almost had Peter North for you. He, he was wound up for you. Yeah. But he says he likes his men big. He liked you when you were fat. Yeah. Now you're too thin for Well, he ought to love you then. <laughs> hey, listen, he ought to be I'm, obsessed with you. I'm at a restaurant here in Beverly Hills, in West Hollywood. They got the best deal. to call the four deuces, two eggs, two strips of bacon, <laughs> two link sausages, <laughs> two hotcakes for $1.99. Hey, it's perfect on the Atkins. Just uh, forget the pancakes. <laughs> is, is, is this, does this qualify for the diet? Why don't you go on it? Well, what is wrong with you? Do you have a death wish? You know, I think I think Ted Bundy had a point. Too much pornography turns you into an Al Goldstein, a compulsive overeater. Do you believe it? I'm doing a hardcore porno scene in, a, in three hours with Ron Jeremy. Yeah. I mean, it's not Ronnie and I. Ronnie well, and I and a girl. Oh, what a I know this guy. And, and you know something? People are eating here, Al, right now. They've got their <laughs> fingers down their throats just thinking about this. Anyway, happy 20th anniversary. You know, radio is the lowest common denominator. The fact you've lasted for 20 years proves it. Yeah. No question about that. I love you, Neil. You're really a great guy. I, I am. know you don't want anyone to know it. And Rodriguez has been doing you really well. His, his, Crystal said, his wife said he has no energy for a woman when he's through with you. <laughs> <laughs> Please practice. Oh, safe what sex. a sense of humor you are. Please use a condom with Rodriguez. Yeah, hey, listen, who can tell, who can tell where to find it when you got that foreskin in the way? Happy anniversary. Thanks, Al. Thank you. Don't let us interrupt dinner. No, thanks. Okay, Bye. see ya. You remember the day that you were here when he came in here and yeah. had the, um, oh, look at that. Just what we needed was that back again. When he had the industrial-sized box of cereal. <laughs> you remember that? No, I'm not joking. He ate, he ate yeah. the entire thing. It was, it was, no, seriously, it's like when a school that's got like a thousand students, you know, they get those gigantic, like an extra when it used to be open, which they're closed now, by the way, here. And uh, he ate the whole thing right out of the box. And that was just an appetizer. Mm -hmm. That was just for before whatever yeah. was cooking downstairs at the moment. Through. Yeah, it's it's a miracle. That's one of the seven wonders of the world that that man can still be alive, and, and he and he's doing a, a porno with yeah, uh, with Ron Jeremy with Ron and, uh, Jeremy. Now, Randy West tried to tell him. Hi, this is Randy West, and they don't come any better than me or Neil Rogers. Randy tried to tell. Do him you that. come in and see Erin Summers when she has her porno star? As guests? No, as a matter of fact, because uh, there's a little problem with Aaron. I'm actually a lesbian. But, uh, <laughs> we, we don't want to go into it too deeply. You know? <laughs> Seriously, have you ever seen Aaron and a seal? Have you ever seen one of those seals, those clapping seals in the uh, zoo? Have you ever seen them together? What are you... They, what are you... Listen. <laughs> <Huh>? There it is. <laughs> she gets our seal of approval. Oh, man. God, the sex bitch. Don't worry about her too much. <laughs> so anyway, it's 149 at WYD. We've got a party going on here today. People that we don't even know who the hell they are in here. It's uh, just incredible. It's amazing. It's almost... Incredible. But hey, that's all right. <laughs> we got pizza. We got... Uh, who do we want to thank? Lorenzo's brought. We got uh, Flores, as always. Flores, Sonny yeah. from the market didn't bring no food because he can't afford it, but he did show his beautiful red face with the white hair. And we had uh, who? Crab House. Crab House. Uh, thank you so much, Crab House. The uh, lobster and the... Uh, Whatever else they brought, the scallops, which I think Rimmer's got. And who the hell brought all the steak? Lorenzo's? Yes. They've got the best meat in the world. You know that ponytail sat here, eight. There were like two big steaks in that. Uh, right, one for you and one for me. One for George and one for me. And Jeff Cohen, Mr. I'm starving, but thank God I had real good insurance. <laughs> he ate both steaks. He just sat down and ate and left. Yeah. It he was sat great there. It was he, really good to see him. No, I didn't see him at all. He just buried his head in the goddamn thing with a steak in there. He's with a wiggle, with a wiggle when he walks. Sways with a wiggle when he walks. What is love? Big Mitch Lewis and his ponytail. The cutest ponytail that sways with a wiggle when he walks. No, nah, you'll be much more shocked when you hear that. Forget about that. I don't have time. Sorry, Ponytail. We don't have time for this. I'm looking at the board. Uh, I'm going to give you a little clue as to who this is on here. Okay, listen carefully. I am that hemorrhoid. Oh, my oh, God. No, no. Joey. 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 My best, close, personal friend. 
my, my, I miss kissing you on the lips, baby. Uh, I have my nose up Neil's ass. Oh, my God. Well, I got news for you. There's no room left in my body. Larry King finished the job two hours ago. <laughs> God. He didn't, he didn't miss an inch. And in my case, that's not much. Well, I'm, I'm calling you from the subway in New York so that you can experience the smell of urine and reefer. So how's the sandwich? They're doing great. They live down here with me. Yeah, no, I meant the subway. Oh, sorry about that. They love us at subway. That was a bad move. Bob says Joey's coming back. Yeah, he is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Funny, Bob. What a sense of humor. <laughs> I'm yeah. coming back this weekend, Neil. I'll, I'll be stopping by the house and I'll pee in your pool for you. Yeah, it looks like you already beat me to it. How Joey, are you? So where are you living now? You're not living in a big city, are you? Yeah, I'm back and forth. I'm, I'm home on weekends. I, I just get... A, I mean, I have to experience only the best of Neil. Also, in other words, you're still in Plantation by me on a weekend? Absolutely. You still have that house? Also, yeah. you're the guy that comes by every Saturday and eggs my house. I've been trying to tell you that. I noticed that, yeah. right. Me and Larry cool. King. So what's the story? You got, you're got you on WOR? Yeah, I'm is on that, the network. I'm is on... that before or after Arlene Francis gets done and Joel Spector? She died 12 years ago, Neil. Did she? And, and we did, did tell her. Didn't hurt huh. you. Didn't hurt you. I'm still here. I know. Hiya, hiya, Joey. Hey, is that is that the uh, the wonderful bird? Yes, hey, man. He was on the air with me. We had a good time I, together. I called Joey a few weeks ago just to say hi. You yeah. did? Yes, yeah. his show is on in Lakeland. And we said some positive things about you, Neil. I know you can't stand it. I can't believe it. Positive and negative. And last oh, night, there we too. go. You didn't talk about my minor personality flaws like Steve Kane did you? No, I, I, as a matter of fact, last night said what a brilliant broadcaster you are, but I know you can't take the heat, so I won't go into it. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I want to wish you a happy anniversary. I think you're the best, and uh, I mean, you certainly were the best competition I ever had. I got knocked on my butt. Now listen, I got something I want to play for you, okay, Joey? All right. You'll yeah. love this. this Those were the some... days. Listen carefully. Hope you beat me in the ratings. You're better than I am. Even the competition agrees. The Neil Rogers Show on WZTA Miami Beach, Fort Lauderdale, and the Palm Beaches is the best morning show in South Florida. Anybody who gets a nice chair on an AM station is a hero in my book. You're like St. Thomas Aquinas. you got no problem with me. Even the other morning shows listen to the Neil Rogers Show on Zeta 4. I hope you beat me in the ratings. You're better than I am. <laughs> I have my nose up Neil's ass. Sure sounded like it, Joey. How do you, do you remember that? Well, how could I... Uh, Neil, what, what can I say? You've said it all, all right? You've yeah. said it all twice. We called Joey, or Joey called us. When yeah, we used to... And that's one thing we'll say for Joey. We can't say much else, especially with Bill Marshall in the room. But uh, <laughs> the one thing I can, I can say is that he, at least he and uh, we had Tanner called before. They let yeah. him out for a couple of days. Tanner was on the phone. <laughs> and Sonny Fox... Now, Sonny Fox hasn't called. That pisses me off. Mm -hmm. but, but at least all you other guys, the only one that was uptight about us calling on the air was uh, Budell. Yeah. And Joey... he also did call today, and Irene Richards in tears about it. <laughs> Joey was just great. I remember that when we... Now we... you're getting carried away. Well... Hey, Neil. Uh, Neil. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I just want to give you a big kiss. So I'm stopping by the house tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah, you'll see a big for sale sign on the house, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to you, pal. All right, I love you. Good Hang luck. in there. See ya. Bye. Okay. Those were great days the when Joey used to come in the studio and kiss yeah. you. I miss He's those the days. Best. Yeah. yeah, he used to smell like a walking French whorehouse, too. God, what a joke. So anyway, it's 154 at WIOD. <laughs> News, talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD. Traffic's backed up on 95, and there's an accident there. And there's an accident on the Palmetto near 200 and 238th Street. And somebody died somewhere else. I think on 38th Street or something. And, and that's um, by versus by traffic. Ay, Dios mío, esos carros. Exactly. Too many of those carros on the highway. Probably all going real slow over by the airport. So do we have, like, who's that on the bat line right now? Nobody. Thank God. Okay, all the important people are, now it's ringing. WYOD. Okay. All right. That wrong line. Been, what is it? What do you mean wrong line? Oh, they hung up. Like I said. So we're almost out of time. Let's do one or two of these, because these poor bastards, I feel sorry for them, really. And if you believe that, here's Kendall. Hello. Neil and the bird. This is a, it's like a time warp today. It's warped. Yeah, you got it. I've been on since 1030, but it's been worth every minute. You've wow. been on hold since 1030? Yeah. Well, it must be turning purple by now. Oh, I am. <laughs> God. It's, it's been worth every minute. Neil, I just want to thank you and the bird, because uh, I started listening back in June of 89, and I've been hooked ever since. You are basically the reason I have stayed down here. Really? Yes. Yeah, well, I apologize for that. <laughs> It's been well worth it. I, 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 so what do you think? I think today we proved that, like, once every six years or so, the bird is dynamite on his show. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
and we can afford to feed him that well, often, too. the first too. two hours, yeah. The, the last two hours burned a, little, a bit too much. But I, I remember... You, know, you notice how he started really getting into it again. He started really, like... Uh, like and and even, even Kane noticed that. You notice that? How he said you've grown a big pair, and you're, like, really assertive now. Got and ballsy, uh, yeah. Pretty soon you'll be sitting behind a, a big chair there. Yeah. I still remember the first show I ever listened to. <laughs> you guys. Neil. Yeah. First show I ever listened to was uh, Dion. Yeah, Dion in the studio for his birthday. Yeah, yeah. And I've been hooked from that day on. You know something? Great show. You know something to show you that I still haven't lost it, pal. That it's a, they they look at all these racks, they think, oh, <laughs> he don't know where anything is. <laughs> well, guess what? Guess what? Uh, you know, I've gone down the road, stop at Fannie Mae. I'm gonna tell old Fannie what I heard of Bob and say, don't stop me talking. I wanna tell you everything I know. I wanna break up the signifier. Whoa, people, somebody's got to go. You know, Neil told Rich, Richie told the bird, and Bird told Annie, Annie told her mother. Tell her, brother, too, don't stop me talking. I'm gonna tell everything I know. You know, like that. <laughs> yeah, like that. Now, okay, you remember so, that day when he sat in here sure. with that uh, uh, signature cap on that thing? He gave me one. He gave me I one. He gave me it. one. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still, still holding it. it. Well, yeah. thanks a lot, pal. Okay, so, Neil, uh, uh, so uh, in conclusion, happy anniversary. Thanks for everything. And Kyle Isley, God. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, Rick Edwards, God. You yeah. Know, this is for the old timers today. Yeah, exactly. Some Mike Disney, things. God. Stanley <laughs> Cohen. God. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks, uh, Bert. It's been great seeing you, and thanks good. to everybody, and it's been a pleasure. And I'll act humble and all that other, and go home and open up all the good stuff and see what I got. Emotional stability is not what it's cracked up to be. WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. News, talk, and entertainment radio. 610 WIOD.